So welcome to our Microsoft Teams live event on remote learning, staying connected with remote learning through Microsoft Teams and Office 365. Okay, so yung ako na introduce na sa inyo ni Sir Lingat kung bakit in, pinapagamit sa atin ngayon yung Office 365. Okay, so actually pwede nga po natin nakuha to na pinrovide ng central office. So sana po gamitin natin kasi sayang naman po siya. Okay, so I am very much happy and excited to be with you today, my co-educators, and talk about staying connected through remote learning despite the pandemic that we are facing now, no? So, kahit na medyo nahirapan po tayo dahil sa COVID-19 na to, so learning must continue, no? Para po uh, ma-provide natin yung uh, quality education na deserve ng mga bata, no? Never in my mind that we are going to experience this kind of change, actually. So especially in the academe, where we are going under a paradigm shift that teaches us the better normal. Okay, sabi nga nila, better normal nga po ba ito? Natanan ng iba. So this also provides us the opportunity to be dynamic as educators because there are lots of things that has to change when it comes to our workplace or in general in our lives okay so it's, it is very practical to stay at home and be safe and use whatever resources that we have in order for us to teach or to reach out to our students okay so let us start with the end in mind the objective of this webinar for our as educators are ayan po, learn what is remote learning then understand the difference between synchronous and asynchronous learning and then evaluate the types of assessment available in remote learning. And then I'm going to show you later on on how you can plan in structuring the school day-to-day -day schedule. Okay, papakita ko po later sa inyo yun. Then we're going to explore ways to incorporate social and emotional components into a remote learning experiences. Then we're, get to, we're going to get to know Microsoft Teams, tapos papakita rin ko, ko rin po sa inyo yung Microsoft Forms kung paano po kayo uh, makapag-create ng quiz uh, or mga sheet, sheet works online na pwede nyo pong pasagot sa mga studyante nyo. Okay? How to use Microsoft Teams for remote learning and conferencing. Kagaya po ng ginagawa natin ngayon, we're conducting a live event. So, I will show you later on paano po or introduce to you how you can do that and how to create a quiz using Microsoft Forms. Okay? So that's where we are headed, no? So our agenda is basically our objectives, no? We will dig into those objectives. We will spend at least about three hours together, I think. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post it in our in our live Q and A chat box. No, wag po kayo mahiyang magtanong. Post nyo lang po yan, and we will try our best to answer your queries or your question. Okay? So our agenda, so yeah, nga, welcome. What is remote learning? Synchronous versus asynchronous. We're going to discuss that later. And then working with students remotely. So ito na po talaga yung pinaka-inting ngayon talaga, no? Uh, we're going to work with students remotely, mapa online man yan, or by giving them modules, okay? So assessment in remote learning, structuring class time, remotely. Yun nga, papakita ko po sa inyo later yung example ng class schedule na ginawa ni Microsoft. Then, humanizing a remote learning experience, maintaining routines, and use Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Forms as an online platform for remote learning. Okay? So, ito yung question. So, what is learning? I know um, by now, siguro sa dami na nang inaten yung mga webinars, mga teachers, about it. So remote learning is where the student and the educator or information source are not physically present in a traditional classroom. No? Ibig nga, wala tayo sa face-to-face -face na kagaya ng ginagawa po natin. Kasi nga po, dahil nga sa pandemic na to. So information is relayed through technology such as discussion boards, video conferencing, and online assessments. Okay? So remote learning occurs when the learner and teacher or source of information are separated by time and 
distance. Distance, therefore, cannot meet in a traditional classroom. Okay, it is can be it can be cost efficient way to reach many people with resources that would otherwise be unreachable through a flexible, customizable, accessible learning space. So with our situation, in order to stay away in contact with the pandemic, okay, sa COVID-19 na to, we had to stay at home, di ba? More often than our normal settings prior to this pandemic, okay? So before, we teachers and school administrators Okay, we had to go to school every day in order to teach our students. But now we have this thing we call new normal. So new normal na, usong usong ngayon ng word na new, new normal na yan, di ba? Hashtag new normal, okay? So ano bang new normal to? And others would ask, better normal po ba ito? Ito nga ba yung makakabuti para sa atin? Well, actually, ito yung makakabuti, makakabuti po sa atin, yung remote learning kasi it will help us to stay away. Uh, dun sa danger na pwedeng idulat sa atin ng COVID-19. So, where we limit ourselves from gathering and limit ourselves in being with people. Okay? So, cost efficient nga daw ba ito? So, let's look at it in a futuristic way. Okay? Though some will say that this is not cost efficient because they will spend more time and money on internet. Yung nga, magpapakonek sila ng sarili nilang internet service provider. Uh, magpapaline sa mga telecoms na mga data nila, then they're going to buy their gadgets. But let us look at it on a lighter side. When we already have the facilities to conduct remote learning. So kasi naman, eventually, di ba, magkaka, uh, sa ngayon, nasa paradigm shift nga tayo, we are in the transition. So we're still developing uh, kung paan natin mabubuo yung mga facilities to conduct remote learning. Okay? Schools will be able to save electricity, ba? Number one na yun, malaking uh, saving na yun sa MOE natin. We get to spend more time at home with our family. Ayaw nyo ba yun? Kasama nyo yung family nyo while you are working. Uh, get away with stress, ba? Brought to us by daily traffic. Number one yan, dito sa Tarlac, ba? napaka din ng traffic. These are just some of those examples, okay? Also, remember that remote learning is a strategic measured approach so that we can meet the needs of our students in learning as best as possible, di ba? This is not a traditional classroom that we are used to. Remote learning doesn't mean that we have to put everything we do before online, okay? Hindi naman dapat kailangan lagay natin lahat doon. Kaya nga nandiyan po yung, yung milks, di ba? Para yung mga importante lang yun ang bibigay natin. Yun yung kagandahan ni remote learning. So we need to have specific measure May kailangan natin ng action plan. Sanayin naman tayong gumawang action plan, di ba? Okay, simplify things in order to get the attention of the learner so that it will be enable us or it will, it will enable us educators to carry our or carry out our objectives. Okay? So, sabi dyan, how is online delivery different? Okay? So, in the previous slide, we talk about remote learning. So how it is, is it different from face-to-face -face instruction or face-to-face -face classroom? Okay, ano bang pagkakaiba niya? Okay, so how is online delivery different? Diba in online delivery, the facilitator is asked to bridge the physical distance that separates the participants. Okay, this is done through establishing a community. Okay, so magkailangan natin mag-establish a community between our learners and it's something that we will talk about more in a moment, okay? So, Community, the community that I was talking about is important because the social dynamics are the same in virtual environment, but the implications are very much different. For example, teacher ako, di ba? So I may ask my students to do a group activity kung wari. And yun, I provide them time, for example, 10 minutes, okay? Sabihin ko, okay class, you have to do your group work or group activity for 10 minutes. Okay? So, pag natapos na yung time period na binigay sa, ko sa kanila, um, I will tell them, okay, class, please go back to your seats, okay? Properly without noise. So, more likely, yung sinabi ko na, please go back to your seats, that's a verbal cue, okay? Verbal cue will make the students respond by going back to their seats, okay? Diba? So, now, in virtual environment, how are we going to apply these verbal cues? Paano tayo maglalagay ng verbal cues 
na ganito sa mga sudyante natin, hindi naman nga nila tayo nakikita. Okay? To our students in remote learning. Okay? One way is by asking them, okay, students, if you have any question, type it on the chat box or you ask the students, did you understand the lesson? Okay? Uh, please use the emoji thumbs up kung naiintindihan nila and kapag uh, emoji thumbs down, if not, okay? So, pwede natin pagawa yan, no? Pwede silang gamitin yung mga emoji sa chat box nila at, at mag-enjoy pa yung mga bata, okay? Or we can ask them to type which part of the lesson they did not understand doon sa chat box. So, these are just example to replace those verbal cues. So, also in virtual class, the content can be static or distant because they cannot see you physically. This may cause boredom, especially if the teacher is talking to a live video. Kung video lang na binigay mo, recorded na siya, tapos si teacher lang pinakikinggan nila. Or the student is watching a very long video without interaction. Di ba pag nanotay ng video, mga napakaba, kahit naman tayo mga alas na nabobore tayo minsan, di ba? So nawawala yung focus natin. So if the students are just watching the entire session, this setup does not help in reaching out to the students. So it is up to us on how to make our lesson more engaging. Kailangan laging engaging yung mga lesson natin, di ba? So we can use different applications. Ang dami namang applications dyan, di ba? Malibang kay Teams. Actually, yung iba nga, pinag-aralan nyo na natin sa mga ibang webinar, kay Bibal, yung mga ganyan, di ba? Sa DepEdTech Unit, tinuruan na kayo, nag na rin siguro kayo ng mga webinar doon, uh, wherein they present application that you can use to engage your students in online learning or remote learning. Uh, like Kahoot or Flipgrid. Narinig nyo na ba yung Kahoot? Siguro na gamit nyo na to. It's a fun way or an application or interactive game application. Okay, parang pwede ka magbigay ng quiz in a form of a game using Kahoot. So itong Kahoot na ito, introduce po ito sa inyo later ng mga kasama kong uh, resource speakers sa uh, August 5 and sa August 7. Okay? Or we also have Flipgrid. Ito naman Flipgrid. I will introduce this to you later. Okay? We use Flipgrid to make it more engaging or any other application available online to make the lesson more interactive maliban nga sa Microsoft Teams. So re learners rely on the facilitator to bridge the physical distance that separates the participants nga. Then social dynamics are the same but the implications are different. And content can feel static and distant. Okay. So now, the number one goal for remote learning is to continue learning for our students. Tayo mga teachers, we are lifelong learners, di ba? Uh, Non-stop tayong nag-aaral. Kasi nga, gusto nating mag-grow pa kung ano yung mga skills or alam natin para ma-impart naman natin to sa mga sadyante natin. Hindi lang to para sa professional development natin. Okay. However, the focus of that learning shifts from physical to online environment. The key is to understand that it cannot be like what we do in face-to-face -face classroom setup anymore, okay? Because it is not the same. Hindi nga siya magkatulad. It has a lot of differences. So we need to find ways on how can we teach our students online without jeopardizing what must be learned. Yung sacrifice ko, ano yung dapat nilang matutuhan, okay? There are a lot of things to be considered. In short, we need to simplify our content. Kailangan natin simplify yung content natin, okay? Simplify our processes and of course, simplify our expectation. Kaya nga po, di mo nabanggit ko kanina, di ba din develop ni Central Office, si Deped Central Office yung MELT, okay? Na kung saan nakafocus lang, ano yung mga pinaka-importanting dapat matutuhan ng mga sudyante natin ngayon time na to ng pandemic in uh, using remote learning or doing remote learning, okay? So how do we simplify those things? So I have here two questions to ask ourselves on what to include in our remote learning session. Okay, so number one, what is the enduring understanding students need to have at the end of the lesson or unit? And number two, if I only had 10 minutes with my student, or students, what is the most crucial information for me to give them or for them to retain? So it's like a mixture of being an essentialist and being a progressivist in a way that you will teach an essential concept and you will use different method on how you will deliver your 
content. Okay, so these questions answer where the Department of Education proposed ito, the most essential learning competencies or yung MELS. I'm sure uh, kayo mga teacher alam na natin yan kasi ngayon uh, kailangan natin gumawa ng mga modules diba? or yung mga learning activity sheets habang hinihintay pa natin yung pagdating ng mga module na manggagaling sa central office. As the guide in identifying which are the competencies that the teacher need to focus on to give emphasis. So, provided that we have limitations, it is a great help not just for the students, but as well as for the teachers to lessen the workload that we have. It helps us tackle the lessons straight to the point what the students need to learn. So, yun nga, because of this melts, na compress na yung mga lesson, yung pinaka important lesson, uh, it will help us to tackle yung mga, in, mga important lesson na dapat natin ibigay sa estudyante, okay? Kasi nga, kailangan natin ma-engage yung students in uh, doing this remote learning. Okay? So, understanding the difference between the two, uh, uh, sorry, so synchronous versus uh, asynchronous. So, understanding the difference between the two is very important. Kailangan, uh, very important yung malaman natin yung difference dito. Ayan nga sa illustration, di ba? Can you see the illustration? Okay, so, uh, di ba? Dito, synchronous students learn at the same time, okay? Ayan, they learn at the same time. So, ganito rin kay, kasama rin si teacher dito, okay? Di ba? We learn also with our students. So, synchronous learning is where students learn at the same time. And asynchronous learning naman, ito po, ayan, each students learn on their own schedule. So the key difference between the two is how the students connect with each other and their teacher. Okay, yun yung difference ng dalawa. So the way how both parties connect with each other, yung magkakaiba sila. So what is synchronous learning? Ulitin ko. Synchronous is le learning is where teachers and students are engaged in learning at the same time in the same virtual environment. Ito, be it in a virtual environment, or in a face-to-face -face classroom, kapag uh... Hello, Sir Glenn. Sir Glenn, we can't hear you. Hello po, Sir Glenn, are you okay? We can see your cursor moving, pero hindi po namin naririnig yung bosses niyo, sir. Sige po. So, since we are expecting a little of technical difficulties Hello? for now, we're... Yes, sir. Glenn, are you back? Okay na po. Okay, yes, sir. Ay, Glenn, ko lang po yung headset ko sandali. Ah, sige po. Sige, sir. We're giving them a five-minute break. You may drink water, go, go to the comfort room, hinga-hinga tayo ng konti. Maraming salamat po. So, a five-minute break. And then once Sir Glenn uh, goes back and started discussing, we'll proceed with our discussion. Thank you very much. Hello? Hello, ma'am? Narinig na ako? Hello? Yes, sir, Glenn, we can hear okay, you now. Binigyan lang po natin sila ng break for a while para uminom or magpunta po sa ating restrooms. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Sige po. Three minutes more. Last three minutes. Dito lang po ba sa slide na to hindi narinig? Ma hindi sir, bigla lang na stop. Pero narinig naman namin yung mga previews. Ah, sige. And our ASDS is giving her regards. No, Later on, we'll be hearing her give a message. Sabi niya dito, good afternoon po to all. Kayang-kaya mo yan, Sir Glenn. <laughs> Thank you po, ma'am.
And yes, for the information of our participants, no, our three resource persons, Sir Glenn, Ma'am Cassandra, together with Ma'am Ethel, were our representatives in the National Training of Trainers for Microsoft Office 365. Kaya naman, they are all ready for this and credible enough to discuss things with you. Yes, Sir Glenn, we're going to go back on track. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Rhea. Okay, um, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. So, let's continue with our topic. So, as of the moment, we are with synchronous versus asynchronous. Yun nga po, pagayon na bang, nabanggit ko kanina, synchronous uh, is where students and teachers learn at the same time. As you can see nga dito po sa ating illustration. Okay, and asynchronous learning is where each student learn on their own schedules. Yung sa sarili nilang time and schedule, gagawin nila yung mga tasks um, or school-related tasks na binibigay po natin sa kanila. So, asynchronous learning is when students complete work-related tasks in their own schedule and at their own pace, sa sarili nilang pace. Example, by providing them modules, video assignment that they need to finish in a week, then submit it, as, submit it to us in their own time. So, that's synchronous and asynchronous learning. So I hope you understood or understood what's the difference between the two. Okay, then next, um, remote learning can occur synchronously with real time uh, with your peer-to-peer -peer interaction and collaboration. Ngayon po, kagaya nga sa illustration, si teacher, mga estudyante niya, ayan, they are learning at the same time. Tapos asynchronous learning, ayan po, with self-paced learning activities that take place independently okay now with this synchronous and asynchronous learning and remote learning there are considerations when working with students okay when we are working with students remotely okay when a school is thinking of transitioning to a remote learning environment for a specific time na lang halimbawa there are numerous factors that needs to be put into consideration okay so number one what type of learning environment are we going to use in synchronous or synchronous? That's the first question. The number two, what classes are we going to offer our learners? Then what additional support are we going to provide our students? That's the number three question. Now, to answer these questions, we need to consider the following factors. Okay, I am post the screen natin. No? First, let's talk about bandwidth. Okay. I'm sure, kahit tayo mga teachers, di ba? Uh, marami sa atin ang may problema sa bandwidth. Okay? Bandwidth at home. So, bandwidth is not just an issue for the students, but for us teachers as well. Nakita nyo ba sa news? Yung ibang teachers, I don't know kung nakita nyo ito, ah, na naglalakad ng malayo or umakit pa ng mataas na lugar, naghahanap ng signal para lang makapag-join ng webinar. Uh, nakita ko sa TV news eh, sa GMA, okay? Sa GMA News, always understand that magkakaiba tayo ng connection or ng bandwidth. Siyempre, location dependent and provider dependent din yan, okay? Sa, sa dito sa conception, siyempre, for sure yung dyan sa may kapas, iba yung ang strength ng signal dyan. So, depende sa location, okay? Uh, halimbawa, dito sa bahay, meron kaming maayos na internet connection. How about sa kapit bahay natin or sa ibang bahay, sa ibang household, meron ba silang maayos na internet connection? So, we need to, con to take that into consideration. It can be okay lang, merong mabilis or slow talaga, or when I go to another household, wala silang internet connection. They are using mobile data dun sa phone lang nila. So, those are things that we need to put into or to consider when it comes to bandwidth. Okay? Then next we have Technology. Ito po, si technology. Almost the same with bandwidth. Uh, technology differs from one home to another. Okay? So, for example, ikaw, meron kang laptop, meron kang smartphone. Eh, how about naman yung sa ibang bahay? So, different household have a different type of technology or devices that are in uh, ginagamit nila. So, some would go to internet shops just to be able to go online. Okay, na-experience din naman siguro, na ba? Pag kailangan natin mag, 
internet, pumunta pa tayo ng computer shop nung wala pa tayong mga sarili nating gamit. So we need to consider anong class ng technology meron sa bawat bahay, sa bawat bahay ng estudyante na i-cater natin sa remote learning. So let's think sa dami ng devices na pwedeng gamitin as online tools. Dapat these tools that we are going to use should be available across platforms to ensure that everyone would be able to participate in remote learning. So, dapat kung uh, take kayo ng mga webinar, pinag-aaralan niyo iba-ibang applications, iba-ibang uh, softwares na pwede niyang gamitin sa pag-conduct ng remote learning, make sure na yung mga um, applications na yan pwede gamitin across platforms, kagaya ni Microsoft, Microsoft Teams. Okay, si Microsoft Teams, very versatile yan. Okay, kagaya ni Sir Lingat, I'm a big fan of Microsoft applications or Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365. Napakarami nating pwedeng gawin in just one account. Okay, so everyone will be able to participate in remote learning kung available yan sa mga iba't ibang platforms. So, for example, this Microsoft Teams nga, gagamitin natin, can be accessed in web. Di pa dyan, yung kayo yan, I'm sure, yung iba sa inyo, um, in-access sa web itong Teams live event natin. Yung iba sa atin dyan, ginamit yung mobile application na install sa Android ninyo or sa iOS devices ninyo. Okay? Or yung mga naka-directly installed sa desktop. Pero ako personally, mas prefer ko yung naka-install sa desktop kasi uh, mas maganda yung performance. Okay? Saka yung user interface niya. Okay? So, also my family, isa lang ang uh, isa lang yung laptop nila. Okay? Kaya natin consider yung mga family, I mean, na may isa lang laptop. Okay? Uh, halimbawa, isang bahay, isang laptop. Si parent nag-work from home. Nag-aaten ng webinar. Tapos si student mag-aaral. Need niya gamitin yung laptop, di ba? So, these are things that we need to take into consideration. Sapat pa yung technology or devices na gagamitin nila sa household na yun or sa bahay nila. Okay? And then, next we have what we call other demands sa student. Okay? Aware tayo sa other demands na yun, lalo na yung mga nagano yung minimit yung mga parents okay, sa bahay nila to know bakit di pumasok yung mga uh, sadyante nila, nag-home visit tayo, di ba? So, other demands in students. So, what are these demands sa mga bata? Okay? Example, uh, di naman lahat ng kasambahay, ay di naman lahat ng bahay may kasambahay, di ba? May, may, may tumutunong sa kanila para gawin yung mga uh, household chore nila, chores nila. So, these students will be tasked by their parents to do household chores. Like magsampay, pakibantayan ng kapatid, magsaing, okay? bumili ng suko sa tindahan. So, these things must be considered. So, for us now, it's okay kasi vacation ngayon. No? Uh, okay lang yung mga ganitong sitwasyon ngayon sa mga bata. Okay? Kasi nga, wala pang pasok. But once na nag-start na ang klase, those demands will not change. Nandyan pa rin yan kapag nag-start na yung klase. Hindi yan magbabago. So, as educators, tayong mga educators, we must think on how are we going to provide learning to these students to continue learning with balance. Okay? With balance. Take note. Okay? Kasi kapag may pasok na, hati na ang attention nila. So, yung mga ibibigay natin work or yung mga learning modules, maybe provide them with assignments modules and content materials to study, but provide them also time to finish those tasks provided na may iba din silang aasikasuhin. Kailangan nating i-consider na may iba silang ginagawa. Kasi nga nasa bahay sila. Hindi kagaya kapag nasa school, uh, whole day silang nasa school, kung ano lang yung mga napagawa ng per subject nila, yun lang nakapokus lang sila doon. Hindi kagaya pag nasa bahay, pag biglang inuto sa ninanay yan, bumili ka ng suka doon sa tindahan sa kanto, syempre, Susundin niya yung nanay niya, unahin niya yun, okay? So, students, then next we have students' emotional needs, okay? So, one time, nabasa ko sa isang article where it says more people are getting vulnerable due to pandemic, okay? So, people are social animals, di ba? So, we need people to talk to us. Hindi tayo mabubuhay ng wala tayong mga nakakausap. Hindi ka naman pwede mabuhay na mag-isa lang. And now that we are not allowed to go outside, how are we going to see people and talk to them in the outside world? Okay? This is just not an issue of the students but the adult as well. 
Okay? So, paano pa kaya ang bata, di ba? Um, also, they have emotional needs. Yung mga bata nito may mga emotional needs yan. That is, students have support groups. Um, di ba sa school, sa face-to-face, -face, merong support groups? For example, we have our um, guidance counselor who is always there. Okay? When they have problems, they can do the, go to the counselor and talk. Okay? But not but now, how will we will be able to do that? We need to think of ways to provide assistance to our students when it comes to their emotions because emotional needs is also important. So, kailangan makapag-device tayo ng way paano natin mapapasok yung um, uh, makikater yung students' emotional need with this remote learning. So, pwede siguro gawa kayo ng sa class schedule, mag-alat tayo ng 30 minutes uh, kung saan uh, merong uh, sariling group chat si uh, guidance counselor kung saan pwede siyang i-contactin ng mga parents or ng mga bata kapag may problem sila. Okay? Then lastly, we have what we call or we need to include electives. So let's include electives. What are these electives? Natanong ba kayo din yung alam yung electives? Okay, yung iba sa atin dyan. So these electives comes up in feeding the mind body and soul. So, dito papasok yung isang example, yung physical education. Diba? Kung saan pwede express ng bata ang sarili nila. Sasayaw sila dyan, mag-conduct ng parang um, drama. Okay? So, these electives uh, will teach students to create something which develop their creativity to self-express. So, importante yung electives. Isang example ngayon si MAPE. Okay? So, napaka-importante ng electives in relations to the students' physical and emotional needs. Uh, makakatulong ang mga electives na ito. Okay? In attending a virtual class on a virtual environment, this will provide opportunities for the students to get out of their devices. So, para at the moment, para man naman malayo sila sa, sa gadgets nila, hindi puro gadgets na lang, from time to time or at a given period of time. Okay? So, importante yun na meron tayong, uh, yan, pagtayo, okay, yan tayo mga teacher, shake-shake ng body natin to release stress as, well, hindi puro nakaupo na lang tayo at nakaharap sa computer. So, you need to include electives. So, these are the considerations, no? Uh, we have bandwidth, yan po, we have technology, okay, and then we have uh, other demands sa student, then we have students' emotional needs, and yung mga electives, okay? Now, I have these two questions for you, okay? Um, you can chat your answer in the chat box or um, ano ba? maybe you can write it on a the paper, then later on I'm going, I'm going to give you an activity na kung saan pwede niyong ilagay yung mga sagot ninyo, okay? So, we have uh, the first question, uh, what are your thoughts regarding synchronous versus asynchronous learning? And then, what do you think would be better for us teachers and learners. So you can put your answer dyan sa chat box natin or yun nga, um, isulat nyo na muna yung sagot ninyo. Then later kasi, I'm going to give you an activity. Okay? Then next, um, have you heard about what they call um, info overload? Okay? Um, or yung information overload na sinasabi? Napaka-familiar nating mga teachers sa info overload na ito. Okay? It can be seen on the, in a face-to-face -face class or mas makikita mo nga sa, ayun nga, sa face-to-face -face class. Okay? So, information overload can be seen on their faces on their, or on their body language sa students natin na di na nakikinig. Yung mga students natin, natin na ayaw na or tinatamad na makinig or inaantok na. Yun ay mga signs ng info overload na sila ay wala nang pumapasok sa utak. Okay? Uh, sa utak nila. Kahit sa mga high school students, ah, ganyan din. So, we cannot expect these students to stay focused beyond 15 minutes on a direct instruction in our class. So, kailangan, di ba? Kaya nga, di ba yung, yung tawag ba doon? Icebreaker. Kailangan may icebreaker tayo para uh, minsan, para makuha natin yung attention ng mga bata kapag ka na out of focus na sila. So, if you plan to teach on longer than 15 minutes, okay, make sure to include poses. So, ito yung time na pwede na silang magbigay ng uh, ano ba, reflection nila. They can, after 15 minutes or after 10 minutes, uh, they're going to ask their questions. 
and they're going to give their insights. Uh, mapa violent reaction man yan or whatever, okay? So make sure to give them brain breaks. Napaka importante po ng brain breaks sa mga bata, okay? Sabi dito, the more that we chunk our lesson, the better. The more chunking, the more they will understand our lesson. Also, it's a great way to give them a brain break nga. Okay, so ask them to go to their small, you can ask them to go to their small group to work on a problem, discuss learning, and share questions with each other. Later on, I will show you um, on how to create your groups or smaller chunks of groups where the students can work together in Microsoft Teams. So, tuturo kayo paano mag-create ng uh, channel, ng team, tapos ng mga channel inside those teams, okay? So, yan, you can use the chat functions to create smaller discussion groups nga para may interaction with their classmates. Hindi yung puro ikaw lang yung nagsasalita, tapos pwede silang bumalik. Uh, after nung lang magpunta sa group chat nila, uh, at the designated time, pwede na silang bumalik sa online class natin. So, recognize the need for brain break. So, plan on no longer than 15 minutes of focus attention during direct instruction. Okay? So, you need to include uh, I ask small groups of students to work a problem, discuss learning and share out questions. Yun nga, include poses for students reflections, questions, okay, yung mga insights nila, and then you can use the chat function to create smaller discussion group, which I will show you later. Uh, paano niyang gagawin sa Microsoft Teams. Okay. Um, then next, encouraging engage, engagement during a synchronous learning. So according to research, think of the student's age in conducting your lesson in your online class. Okay. Sabi kasi in a face-to-face -face environment, um, an eight-year-old can only focus for about eight minutes. Wag na tayong lalayo sa eight minutes na yun, okay? So, eight minutes of uninterrupted instruction. So, the best practice is to use the student's age as a guide, excuse me, as a guide in structuring our lesson, okay? If you are in high school, you can expect our students to stay attentive between 12 to 15 minutes. So, what are we going to do about this, okay? So first, Nipel Goro, you can post at designated times to ask questions, have students share their thought, or ask students to respond to questions through chat window prompt. Okay? You may also direct students to quick form poll to, to gauge their understanding sa, sa remote learning, pwede po yan, or sa Microsoft team. I introduce po sa inyo nila, Ma'am Cass and Ma'am Els, paano gamitin si Polly to direct students to quick form poll to gauge their understanding of the lesson. Okay, you may ask students to use, um, ayan, you can may ask them to use simple emoji in the chat window to demonstrate their comfort or assess themselves to gauge their understanding of the lesson, okay? Or you may run a Kahoot quiz to check for understanding, okay? You, uh, by now, uh, sana na-explore nyo na yung Kahoot. This is an interactive game na kagaya na nabanggit ko kanina that we can use to engage our students to participate in our lesson. So um, maybe sa five or sa seven, uh, ituturo sa inyo yan ni Ma'am S, nga, ni Ma'am Cassandra, uh, yung dalawa pa nating resource speaker sa live event na to. Or you yourselves can go to kahoot.com. Okay, kahoot.com. Then you can explore it na para um, may idea na kayo kung ano to. Okay, I'm sure you all as teachers will enjoy this interactive game platform. Okay. Now, um, creating segments, uh, lessons during asynchronous session. In asynchronous learning, okay, it is important to do a segmented lesson. Okay, kailang importante yung mayroon tayong segmented lesson during uh, an asynchronous session. Okay, so uh, maybe you can chunk your lesson into four minute segments so they can take a brain break nga. Okay, this is also a chance for them to post, to post and ref reflect on what they have learned so far, okay? Then, um, actually, you can upload the video using Microsoft Streams, but as of the moment, naka-strict pa yung account natin in adding forms sa PowerPoint where you can create video lessons that then insert forms in between, okay? Possible kasi ngayon yun sa streams 
gagawa ka ng video lesson, then after 4 minutes, merong lilitaw ng Microsoft Forms na may mga questions do na sasagutin ng bata. After nang sagutin, tutuloy na naman yung video, okay? So, record the lesson in a 4 minute, four minute segments, okay? So, students can watch them separately and take uh, a break at the end of one before watching the next one, okay? Or, um, record one video, upload it in Teams or any video uploading platform, okay? Uh, yun nga si uh, Microsoft Stream and use form so that students can reflect on what they are learning. Okay, now, um, other considerations. We, we all know that we are um, effective in our own strategy, di ba? Tayo mga teacher, alam natin na effective tayo sa mga sarili nating strategy from a face-to-face -face learning that we used to do, di ba? Okay, but that strategy may not be effective in an online class. So, kailangan nating um, kumbaga, i-innovate yung sarili natin uh, in conducting an online class. So, we must devise other means in delivering our lessons to make it more engaging and fun for the learners, no? So, um, be a role model, okay? So, be a role model. If your class is 8 a.m., then start your class at 8 a.m. Hindi yung mauna pa yung sadyante mo sa'yo. Dapat ikaw, as a teacher, uh, nandun ka na agad sa oras na binigay mo sa kanila, okay? Or be there a few minutes. Mahirap naman kasi kung uh, nag-schedule ka ng meeting with or ng class with your students, tapos ikaw pa yung malilate, di ba? So, be a role model. Role model. Kaya always show a good etiquette, okay? Show a good etiquette and practice when conducting a remote lesson. For example, yun nga, um, sinabi mo nga sa kanila na may, alimbawa, 9 o'clock meeting. So, be a role model and be there on time, okay? Or, uh, tomorrow, I would like to see you all on video. So, please wear something appropriate, sabi mo yun sa mga sadyante mo. So, because uh, we will take a picture, okay? So, you as a teacher, be an example of a good etiquette wherein you will also wear something appropriate. Kung ano yung sinabi mong instruction sa kanila, dapat ikaw mismo gagawin mo at papakita mo sa kanila. Okay? Pag sinabi mong uh, wear something appropriate because we're going to take a picture, dapat ikaw mismo disente yung suit mo. Okay? Diba? Pag sinabi mong 9 o'clock, uh, start ang klase natin, at night ang lock nandun ko, or a few minutes before that time nandun ka. Okay? Then next, don't be afraid to take Chris. Huwag tayong matakot to take Chris and try, okay, try uh, learning new activities that you can in introduce with your students, no? Push beyond your comfort zone and offer your students varied learning activities and experience, okay? Because our students deserve the best teaching from us, the teachers, okay? okay and then you provide time, okay? And provide time. Uh, and space to nurture students' creativity, okay? This is why electives are very important, okay? You may use Flipgrid, okay, for this activity to conduct debate, propose a solution to an essential question, or to just check in with each other, okay? Yung para, you use Flipgrid para titignan nila, uh, makita nila ka klase na, na, ah, okay lang, lang yung si, si Mont, Juan, okay lang si Maria, parang ganun, di ba? Para makita nila na, okay lang yung classmate nila, okay? And ang dami natin pwedeng gamitin, you can use OneNote, okay? You can use Kahoot or your PowerPoint, okay? So, these are other considerations in conducting um, remote learning. Now, let's talk about naman, um, we have here uh, assessment in remote learning. When we say assessment, uh, this is also another area of instruction, di ba? Kapag um, assessment, this is very important. Okay, so for example, um, in a school year, we begin and end in assessment. Tama po ba, mga teachers? We begin and end in an assessment. So yung mga assessment is also important. And when we uh, provided that in a virtual environment, we already modified our content. So sabihin natin, um, we simplified our process. We simplified our lesson, our content, more likely our assessment will be modified as well. Kung binago natin yung process natin sa pagtuturo, dahil nga sa remote learning, binago natin yung lesson natin, uh, sinimplify natin yung content natin, so likely nga yung assessment uh, will be modified as well na mas simplified siya. We must simplify it, di ba? Um, uh, so kasi nga, nag yung technique natin or yung 
ating method. Okay? So furthermore, we have uh, what we call formative assessment. Okay? So kanina, for, um, formative assessment, as ngayon, summative assessment, sorry. Okay? So sa summative assessment, um, this occurs through a unit. The goal of uh, uh, this assessment is to gauge what this, the students have learned throughout a unit to know if they have prior knowledge. Okay? Yung si, uh, si formative pala, sorry. They have not mastered, uh, ako na yung mga na-master, hindi nila pa na-master, okay? So, what ways can we use to do a, uh, balik muna pa tayo sa formative assessment. What ways can we do to use a formative assessment? So, first we have, pwede natin gamitin si forms, okay? Um, kay Google, di ba may Google Forms? Sa Microsoft Teams po kasi, ay si Microsoft 365 po kasi, meron din siyang forms. So, pwede tayo mag-contact ng poll, ng survey, using forms, Okay? Um, pwede nyo gamitin si OneNote, okay? Si OneNote, papakilala po yan sa inyo ni Ma'am Eds and ni Ma'am Cassandra. Tapos we also have yung whiteboard, okay? May whiteboard or yung Microsoft Word yan. Very familiar tayo kay Microsoft Word. So, pwede nyo gamitin yan uh, para sa paggawa nila ng formative assessment. Now, how about um, summative assessment, okay? So, sa summative assessment, given at the end of the quarter, Okay, example, um, create a portfolio using PowerPoint. Okay, this enables us to measure the student's mastery of a content. So, di ba dati, it is done with pen and paper, tapos lalagay sa folder, kung wari, or sa envelope. But now we have here different applications so that we can assess students' learning. Okay, ano ito mga applications na ito? Pwede nyo gamitin si Sway. Later, I will show you Sway. Um, can you use PowerPoint? Okay. Or you can use a video editor. Gagawa sila ng short video portfolio. Tapos sasabit nila sa inyo. Or they can use a screen recorder sa PowerPoint when kapag ka nagre-report sila tapos they can record themselves while doing the, the report. Okay? Or they can use nga yung sorry, yung flip grid. Okay? They can use yung flip grid. Okay? Then next, um, ito po si flip grid, no? Pakita ko muna sa inyo sa slides. So, you can access Flipgrid by going to flipgrid.com. Okay? In here, you have two options. Kung ayaw mo mag-create ng account or binigyan ka lang ng code, you enter your code here. Dito ilalagay yung code. Or you can uh, sign up as an educator here. Okay? Then, kung, kung magsasign up ka, you can use your Microsoft account na pinrovide sa atin ni ni DepEd, click nyo lang dito, click here, um, sign up with Microsoft account, then you enter your email, okay, then you click next, ayan po, click next, then you enter your password, I hope din nyo pa nakalimutan yung mga password nyo, kung meron man, nakapag-request naman na yata kayo ng reset, okay, um, tapos magpa-pop to, kapag click nyo na yung next, magpo-prompt tong window na to, um, Sabi niya sa inyo, stay signed in. Ayan. So, pwede namang yes, pero ako usually mas prepare ko yung no. Okay? For your safety also. Okay? Um, tapos, kapag ka na-sign in na, lilitaw tong window na to. Welcome to Flipgrid. Okay? You can click start Flipgrid uh, to already start using the application. Okay? The web-based application. As you can make your Flipgrid na. Okay? Ayan. Okay, pag nakapag-create na kayo, click next, dito ito, uh, educator learning community, tapos just click next. Okay, tapos your grid is ready na. You can already share it with your uh, students. Okay, so siguro mas better, pakita ko na lang sa inyo. Okay, um, by the way, dito sa Flipgrid activity na to, uh, dito nyo, ah, uh, gagawin yung, or ilalagay yung sagot ninyo, no? Yung staying uh, connected through remote learning. Ano pa yung mga question natin kanina? What are your thoughts regarding synchronous and asynchronous learning? And tapos, what do you think would be better for you teachers, uh, for you, uh, better for you teachers and learner? Kung asynchronous pa or asynchronous learning. Okay, so, alisin ko muna tong PowerPoint, pakita ko sa inyo pa na gamitin. Okay, so yan. 
So this split grid, no? Ta type nyo lang diyan is yung ayan, info.flipgrid.com. Okay? Ah uh, kapag ka binigyan kayo ng code, enter nyo lang dito, click nyo, tapos um type yung code. Later on, I will give you the code na ilalagay nyo dyan para makapag-participate kayo dun sa activity nyo or you can use educator sign up. Okay? So, ako nakapag-sign up na ako. Kapag once you're sign up, you just click educator login. Okay? So, login tayo. Okay? So, ito yung interface ni Flipgrid. So, may kinerate na ako dyan. Ayan, staying connected. Tsaka yung sa media and information literacy. Or, you can add your own. So, how do you add your own grid? Okay, ito po yung siya. Sa add new grid. Kiklik po natin yan. Nakita niyo po. Okay. Add new grid. Okay. And then, uh, you're going to put name for your grid. So, alimbawa, um, English, kung ngari. Okay. Or, aralin panlipunan. Araling panlipuna. Okay. Then here, you're going to select your grid type. Okay. Kung uh, pang school ba yan. Okay. Students, uh, school email. Students join using their Microsoft or Google school email. Um, as of now po kasi wala pang Microsoft account yung mga bata. Okay. Pero take note, um, may plano naman po si Central Office na bibigyan ng sariling MS account yung mga bata para mas smooth po yung transition natin in remote learning using MS team. Okay? Pagkakalang ko, ko po, nung nag-training kami sa Manila, si Angeles High School po ya, uh, nag-pilot na sila wherein students were already given a student account. Okay? So, student ID, create a list of students. Okay? Pero for now, dahil wala pang account, you can use educator learning community. So, this will be a public, share a public grid with educators in your network. So, let's try to click that. Then, you click next. Okay? Kapag kinlit nyo yung next, magpo-prompto, educator, learning community, you can, you have the option to put password. Okay? So, wag muna natin lagyan ng password. Okay? Then, you click next. Okay? So, yan. Congratulations. Your grid is ready. So, pwede nyo pong ibigay to yung code na to sa mga teachers or sa mga students tapos sa time nila para mapuntahan po nila yung grid na ginagawa nyo para makapag-participate sila. Just copy that, tapos uh, yung link, tapos page nyo sa chat group or bigay na lang yung code wong 7700 kung wari. Okay, so yun yun, no? Okay, for your activity, may ginawa na ako dito eh. Ayan. Okay. For your activity later, or actually you can do it now if you want. Ayan. Um, open natin na. Synchronous and asynchronous learning. Ano yung question kanina? What are your thoughts regarding synchronous and asynchronous learning? Okay. Or what do you think would be better for your teachers and learners? So you can add your answer here. Okay. Ito po yung code. Okay, so ito po yung code ED0DFA75. So yung code na yan, ilalagay nyo po yan. Pag in-open nyo si uh, Flipgrid. Okay, ilalagay nyo po yan dito. Okay, so let's say kung nga copy natin ha. Okay, so pag in-encode nyo yung code, nilagay nyo yung code, mapupunta po kayo sa window na to. Or, you can type po yan, flipgrid.com slash ed0dfa75. Okay, so staying connected through remote learning. Ito yung ginawa ko na po kanina. Okay, so you can add your Answer here or your response here, click nyo lang po yung plus sign. Ayan po, dito yung plus sign. Here's an example.
learn at the same time yung group of students are learning yeah, at okay so yun nga based on this session sa learning natin um synchronous learning is where students uh and the teacher learn at the same time yung group of students are learning at the same time Tapos asynchronous learning naman is where the students learn at their own pace and at their own time so para sa akin no um the balance of both is needed para mas maging effective yung learning okay, so yan no so that's an example of the uh uh, response na pwede nyo ilagay. So, click lang po yung plus sign. Ayan po. Okay, you can start now. Okay, or let's go to Sway naman. Okay. Diba nabanggit ko si Sway kanina? So, how do you access Sway? Um, lagi lang po kayo sa Microsoft 365 account niyo by typing office.com sa browser. Okay, office.com. Ayan po. Then, you log in your account, okay? So, just click sign in. Okay, so, dahil nakasign na ako na yung kanina, kiklik ko na lang yung account ko. Then, I type your password. Okay, you type your password here. Yan, dito po. Then, you click sign in. Okay, so, no. So, ayan. So, this way, nandito po yung mga apps natin. Nabanggit na ni Sir Ling sa inyo. Outlook, OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Ayan. So, let's click Sway. Uh, so, yes, let's show Sir, Sway. Sir Glenn. Ma'am. Yes, remind lang natin yung ating mga participants. no Lahat po, kayo mga teachers, meron po kayong Microsoft Office 365 accounts. Kung hindi nyo pa po nasusubukan gamitin, um, lahat po ng accounts ninyo with their temporary passwords were given to your designated school ICT coordinators noon pa pong January 2020. Again, hingiin nyo lamang po ang inyong mga Microsoft Office accounts and temporary passwords sa inyong designated school ICT coordinators kung sakaling as of now ay hindi nyo pa po ito na-access. Yes, Sir Glenn, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so, ayan po, going back, kanina we talk about or coach how to use Flipgrid using your account. Okay, um, now let's move to Sway. Okay, so yung kanina, kanina nag-login po tayo using our uh, 365 account. Ito po si Sway, no? Para siyang medyo similar siya kay uh, PowerPoint. Okay, uh, mas interactive lang, ng, iba lang yung interact, ano niya, um, platform or yung mga effects niya, okay? So, let's start by creating a new blank sway. So, click nyo yung new blank sway. Ito po siya. Ayan, nakita po ninyo yung cursor ko. Nagpa-flash. So, you click new blank sway to create a new sway. Okay. So, ito lang natin mag-load. Okay. So, ito yung una nating makikita kapag nag-create tayo ng new blank na sway. So, you type your title. So, let's say halimbawa... Um, ang topic sa Rizal, okay? Uh, sa araling panlipunan, okay? You can, uh, put, you put your title here, then you can add a background, okay, a thumbnail, okay? So, pag kinlik nyo yung uh, to, ayan po, you can drag image here, or pag kinlik po nyo yan, automatic, mag-open po siya dito sa browser ninyo, Ayan, no? medyo mabagal lang ngayon. Internet kumulan po kasi. Okay? Um, tapos type nyo, Jose Rizal. Okay? Okay, so, lilitaw po dyan kapag tinayip nyo dito yung uh, topic or yung keyword na nilagay nyo, lilitaw yung mga picture na isasuggest ni Sway. So, halimbawa, I want to use the, this one. Okay? Tapos click nyo lang yung add. Ito po siya. Add the add button. Okay. So, mapupunta na po dito siya sa title card natin. We call this title card. Okay. Then, after that, uh, you click this plus sign to add more content. No? Pwede maglagay ng heading. Okay. Yung text. Okay. Uh, you can uh, add media. Pwede po tayo mag-insert ng video dito actually. Okay. Ng image. Okay. Ng mga audio or mga link. 
Okay? So, let's say, for example, uh, text muna. Um, the life and works of Rizal. Kung wari. Okay? Tapos, we are going to add um, we, uh, media. So, kung let's say, kung wari, lagay tayo ng video. Okay? So, automatic kasi na-open natin tong search kanina. Magbigay siya ng mga suggested video dito sa side. So, pipili na lang tayo dyan. So, halimbawa, um, lagay natin ito kung wari. Yan. Tapos, click nyo lang add. Yan. So, yun na yung video natin. No? Tapos, after that, yung gusto nyo mag-add ng pictures. Okay. Pwede nyo lagyan ng caption to ah. Pwede nyo lagyan ng caption. Parang portfolio nga ito sa paggawa ng portfolio ng mga bata. Tapos click plus. Halimbawa, mga pic image naman, mga pictures ang lalagay nyo. Click image. Ayan. So, pwede tayo maglagay ng parang collage ng mga image ni Rizal or yung topic ninyo. Click nyo lang. Select nyo lang lahat ng gusto nyo may lagay dyan. Okay. So, gusto, gusto natin kung ari yan. Nandito rin yan. Yan. Ito. So, ayan. Tapos, pagka na-choose nyo na yung mga images na gusto nyo lumitaw sa portfolio nyo, click add. Okay. So, ayan. Gandito na lang muna. So, what I want you to do, teachers, is to explore this uh, platform, this uh, application ni 365 to have your student create their portfolio. No? Tapos, um, if you're going to click design, okay, so pwede natin lagyan ng design dyan. Pipili ka na lang. Ayan, o. Oh, may mga suggested styles. Pipili ka. So, alimbawa, gusto mo to. Okay. Tapos, click mo yung play. Okay, kapag ka nakapili ka na. Okay. So, click play. Ayan. So, ito yung tsura. Ito si Sway. Okay. So, diba? Ayan, o. Oh, ito yung title third natin kanina. Ito yung video. Okay. Yung video na nilagay natin, playable siya. Pwede siyang i-play ng mga bata. Okay? Pasabi nila sa inyo. Okay. Ayan, di ba? So, naririn yung music, no? Uh, ayan. Okay? And then, ito yung mga kinolage nating images. So, that's Sway. Okay? So, teachers, what I want you to do is to explore yung Sway para mapagamit nyo sa mga estudyante natin. No? So, let's go back to our uh, PowerPoint to continue uh, uh, our discussion. So, ah. Yan. Okay. So, yun nga po, going back, so flip grid activity natin ito po yung sasagutan yung tanong uh, using flip grid okay ito po yung flip grid code okay ito po yung flip grid code yan ED0 0, 0 po to hindi po siya O DFA75 punta po kayo sa flipgrid.com or pwede nyo pong itype na lang po itong link na to para mas mabilis nyo mapuntahan <coughs> excuse me so, flipgrid.com slash ed0dfa75 so that you can participate dun sa activity na binigay ko po sa inyo. Okay? Then next, um, ito, structuring the day. So, now I'm going to give you an example of how to structure a day. Okay? So, this schedule is created by uh, Microsoft Showcase School for Primary Grades. Example lang po, ito na po. Okay? So, as you can see, it's not the same as before. So, for example, our class starts at um, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Imagine a student sitting at a device for that long. This will lead to this engagement and may lead students not to attend the next class anymore. So, or will give them more reason not to attend your class anymore. Okay, so this example natin, time block, for example, math. On the next day is yung English naman. Ayan, no? So, time block na to. So, Monday, 9.30 to 10.30, math. Tuesday, English siya. Tapos, Wednesday, math. Okay? Tapos, Thursday, reading. Okay? Tapos, Friday, math. And then, 
On time 30 to 12, yung next subject, tapos uh, on the next day, iba na naman sa time na yun. Okay? Uh, para uh, hindi ma-disengage yung mga estudyante sa klase natin. Okay? So, suggestion lang po to. This is from Microsoft Showcase School for Primary Grades. Na po? Okay? And tas this is uh, isang, another next example natin. Again, this schedule is created by um, one Microsoft Showcase School for uh, grade 5 to grade 12. Okay? Uh, may mga block time in which the teacher and a student can meet. So, sa alimbawa, uh, go to your usual day-to-day -day activity. 7.30 a.m., um, wake up. Sa sudyante. 8 a.m., get dressed. Eat breakfast. Oh, thoughts. 9 to 9.45, join the A block call. Okay? Yung, uh, sa subject nila. Brain break. 9.45 to 10 a.m. Okay, go outside, enjoy the, enjoy the fresh air. Okay, napaka-importante po ng brain break. 10 to 11.30, start work on a A block assignment na due in one week. Okay, tapos at 11.30 to 12.30, lunch break nila. Okay, then 12.30 to 1 p.m., join the B block call. Then, um, 1 to 1.15, brain break. Go outside and enjoy the fresh air again. Sa hapon na po to. Tapos, uh, 1.15 to 3 p.m. Work on uh, A block and B block assignment. Na June naman in one week din. Okay? Tapos, 3 to 3.30. Join a virtual office hours. Call with D block teacher to clarify some questions. You have worked during two days. Or pwede yung ilagay dito sa 3 to 3.30 yung uh, time kay counselor. Para kung may mga sadyanting may problem or sa mga parents na may queries uh, regarding sa ano ng sudyante nila, pwede silang sa time na to, okay? So, 3.30 to 4.30 exercise, okay? Another example, okay, yan. 7.30, wake up, get dressed up sa 8 a.m., um, 9 to 10 a.m., work on school work, that's due in one week, 10 to 10.50, join the C block call, okay? 10 50 to 11.05 a.m. Brain break, go outside and enjoy the fresh air. Okay, so this is another example for a student activity. Okay, so here's an, uh, naman for teacher, example of teacher schedule. Okay, so what's important in this sample teacher schedule, we include virtual office hours. Okay, nag include ng virtual office hours, wherein we provided 30 minutes a day for consultation wherein the students can ask you questions or parents can consult you with something or maybe it's a live video chat or just chat during the period of time. Okay, so dito nyo um, ilalagay yan. Okay, so early morning, you wake up at your normal time. This is uh, go about your normal uh, morning routine. Okay, tapos 8 to 8.30, prepare for the first class of the day. Okay, tapos 8.30 to 9.15, uh, you meet A block class to teach concept and assign uh, yung week, yung work nila for this week, yung uh, task nila. Okay. Tapos 9.15 to 11.30, work on a lesson plan and assignments for next week. Tapos you can respond to your email during this time. Tapos sa 11.30 to 12 p.m., prefer for a uh, second class of the day. Tapos uh, yun, 12 to 12.45, meet B block. Uh, class to teach concept and assign week's work. 12.45 to 1.30, you can take your uh, lunch break, no? Tapos, 1.30 to 3 p.m., check in with individual students, okay, who request extra support, okay? Respond to um, uh, email, record next week's video lesson, so it's ready to assign on Monday, okay? Tapos, yung 3.30 to 3 p.m. na, you can hold your virtual office hours, okay, for students who have questions or need additional support, okay? Dito nyo rin pwedeng ipasok si guidance counselor, Okay, uh, 3.30 to 4.15, uh, when you begin to integrate assignment into your class, grade work, A and B, or black students na uh, nag-submit, excuse me, na nag-submit for the day, okay? Then next, um, moving on, connecting with your students, okay? So by connecting with your students, we can use this, ayan nga, you can make team calls, okay? Uh, you and your students can meet asynchron synchronously to discuss content, share experience from the day, and discuss how everyone is adapting to the transition to remote learning. Okay, tapos, uh, ayan, no, virtual office hours. Okay, uh, yung kanina nga, if you plan to record class lessons for later students viewing, 
we can schedule virtual uh, office hours where students can join a call okay to check in questions or share their insights and ideas um we can use flipgrid okay to connect with students flipgrid allows you and your students to record. Yan, di ba? Kagaya ng kanina example, pinakita ko kanina, or yung gagawin nyo ngayon, kung may gumawa na sa inyo. Uh, easily share short videos, continuing the, connect the, the connection in a asynchronously uh, on their own time. Okay? A daily topic can help with tracking attendance. So, by using Flipgrid. So, pwede nila itong gawin, i-assign nyo lang at their own time, at their own pace. Okay? Tapos, uh, conversations in teams. Okay? Throughout the day uh, and week, students can chat with their classmates and uh, you host tabs in your teams, okay? Uh, and here we have example of Office 365 Teams application, which provides us flexibility in conducting our online class, okay? So when it comes to functionality, uh, yun nga yung sabi ko, I personally think okay naman sila yung uh, mga application na binibigay ni uh, 365 sa atin, Microsoft 365. So, yun nga si MS Team, yung Office 365 nyo, kung nasaan si Word, Excel, si OneDrive, okay, si Sway, okay, um, yung Pear Deck, yan, papakilala po ni Ma'am S and Ma'am Kasay nyo si Pear Deck, uh, magandang gamitin rin po to sa klase natin. Yun nga si Flipgrid, yun si Polly, it's um, an application that you can Add also, actually, lahat siya pwede niyong i-add sa Teams, lahat to, okay? Pwede i-add yan kay Teams sa mga platforms at or application na to sa loob ni Teams to uh, engage learning with your students. Okay, si Polly, uh, this is used to, uh, if you want to conduct a poll uh, sa, sa isang topic sa, sa klase ninyo, okay? Si Kahoot, yan nga, an interactive game. Okay, so... Um, maintaining your connection with student is critical, okay? Bakit natin nasabi to? Maintaining your connection with students is very critical, okay? Yung kaibigan kong teacher, halimbawa, um, may instance daw na nung enrollment, meron bata sabi niya, um, I will no longer uh, enroll in an online class because I will not learn anything, eh. sabi niya ganun, okay? So, uh, in this sense, so let's create uh, a sense of normalcy, okay? to enable our students to feel na kayo pa din yun, no? Uh, Nag-iiba lang yung, yung way ng pag-deliver ng lesson, okay? hindi from face-to-face -to, -face to remote learning, pero sabihin nyo sa kanila, ito pa din si teacher, okay? Na despite na, na, na naka-virtual session kayo, na parang when you're uh, in your class, be yourself, okay? Kung ano kayo as a teacher, uh, kung gano'n kayo ka-warm sa students niyo, just be the teacher, that you are. So our main goal here is, uh, as a teacher, is to make our student uh, love our subject. Okay. Uh, maybe may it be in the face-to-face -face platform or dito sa, uh, sa remote learning platform. Okay. In order for us to maintain our connection with them. Okay. Um, also, yeah, and dito, uh, you can maintain school-wide routines. No. Pwede pa nating uh, schedule sa class schedule natin na, na mayroon pa rin prayer. Okay, uh, to remind them na mayroon pa din mga ganong activity na kahit na remote learning, may ganong pa rin yung activity, uh, they can, maybe they can do it, do it alone. Okay, you're going to plot it in their calendar so that they will be reminded na there is this act, an, an activity. Ano ba? Every Monday, ba? A national anthem. Okay, um, recite the core values, uh, re uh, sing the school song. Okay, or yung... Uh, principal morning greeting, okay? I-plot natin sa calendar, okay? Just so they will be reminded na may ganun pa activity. So, para ma na normal pa rin yung ginagawa natin, okay? And also, ito, uh, let go of the need to be perfect, okay? So, let go, let go of the need to be perfect. So, yun nga, we are in a transition to remote learning, okay? And in remote learning, there are a lot of things to be taken into consideration, no? So, dapat, uh, ilet ko muna natin yung need to be perfect, no? Di tayo superhero. <laughs> okay. So, what are these consideration? Okay. So, let's hope that the virtual environment is as smooth as our face-to-face -face class, okay? Di ba nga? But this will not be the reality in which we are in a 
paradigm shift. So kahit sabi natin uh, gusto natin na parang sa face to face class pa rin natin siya. Hindi nga to yung reality, okay? We are in a transition period nga. We are in a paradigm shift, okay? So we are in a virtual environment as a tool in reaching out and teaching our students and when we are in this exploration for this uh, virtual environment, everything will not be perfect. Hindi magiging perfect lahat kasi nga. We are still trying new sa ating lahat to, no? okay? As how we are doing it before. So let's shake up teachers. Okay lang yan. Okay, okay lang yan. Um, I know sa, sa part natin parang bagong learning na naman to. Uh, we're transitioning to an, uh, a different platform. Um, okay, uh, may part na mahirap, pero okay lang yan, teacher. Let's shake up, okay? So, yun nga, we are in the transition of learning, uh, the different platform that we can use in teaching in a uh, virtual environment. So, let's practice using Microsoft Teams, no? So, don't worry, darating din ang time na, ano, uh, gamay na gamay mo na yung, yung mga tools, kagaya nitong Microsoft Teams in reaching out to people. Sa una lang talaga mahirap. Okay, di ba? Parang pag bumili ka ng cellphone, di ba? Dati naka-Android ka, tapos bigla ka mag, uh, mag iOS kung wari, Apple na cellphone. Tapos iba yung interface. So sa una parang, ang oh, pangit nito, di ba? Kasi hindi mo nga siya gamay. So ganun din sa, sa Microsoft Teams, no? Sa, or sa mga platforms na gagamitin natin. Sa una lang talaga, siyempre, we're adjusting, uh, we're, we are learning on how to use those platforms. So pero eventually nga, yun nga, uh, magiging gamay din natin kung paano ito gamitin. So, eventually, magiging smooth din yung lahat. Okay? Um, also, yan, uh, don't forget about, ayun uh, nga, social and emotional learning. So, let's not forget social and emotional learning. So, di ba kapag gumagawa tayo ng objective no, sa lesson plan natin, uh, we need to take into consideration yung um, cognitive saka yung affected saka psychomotor, di ba? Ano ba yung cognitive? Yan, yung cognitive sa utak yan, di ba? Understanding of a uh, no, uh, specific concept through discussion, okay? Um, psychomotor, okay? Skills learning, example, learning through watching an instructional video na pwede nating gayahin, okay? But how about the um, affective or social and emotional, emotional learning or the affective domain, okay? So how can we teach this? Okay, so when we teach our content, make sure we tackle about social awareness or we make them practice social awareness. For example, by using Flipgrid, they can share their point of view on a certain issue or topic or through a group chat discussion. Okay, or a simple saying hello to everyone so that they would know that their classmate is okay and well. Okay, so let's build a community with our student. Even it's uh, just virtual because uh, it builds relationship with each student and among their teacher by building a community, okay? Now, uh, self-awareness, ano ba itong self-awareness uh, na to, okay? So, self-awareness is the ability to accurately recognize one's emotions and thoughts and their influence on behavior, okay? This includes you uh, accurately assessing one's strength and limitation and possessing a well-grounded sense of confidence and optimism okay tapos self-management okay self-management yung ability to regulate one's emotions thoughts and behaviors effectively in different situations no so this includes managing stress controlling impulses uh, motivating oneself and setting and working toward achieving personal and academic goals okay tapos um social awareness okay the ability to take the perspective of uh, and empathize with others from diverse backgrounds and culture, no? To understand social and ethical norms for behavior and to recognize family, school, and community resource support, okay? Tapos, uh, relationship skills. Ito yung ability to establish and maintain healthy and rewarding relationship with diverse individuals and groups no so this includes um communicating clearly listening actively cooperating okay resisting inappropriate social pressure uh, negotiating conflict constructively and seeking and offering help when needed okay and then lastly we have responsible decision making 
Okay? So, as a responsible decision making, uh, it is to make constructive and respectful choices about personal behavior and social interaction based on consideration of ethical standards. Okay? So, in safety concerns, social norms, okay, the realistic evaluation of consequences of various action and the well-being of self and others. So, we need to not forget yung sa pag-conduct ng remote learning, yung social, yun, okay, social emotional learning ng bata, okay? So, at this point, uh, I think we are halfway to our session, okay, so Office 365. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so what is Office 365? Inintroduce na yan kanina nga, ni Sir Lingan. So now, DepEd acquired uh, Microsoft license for Office 365 education, no? So we teachers can use this platform in conducting our lessons and work-related tasks. And of course, for remote learning, okay? So ito yung mga tiles, no? Yun yung mga ibang, iba't ibang application na provided with our Office 365 account. So we are very lucky to have this for free, no? Wala na tayong binayaran. Automatic license yung... Um, Microsoft Office natin, dati naghahanap pa kayo na nakahack. Ngayon yan, no? free na siya, binibigay na ni, ni DepEd sa atin. So, sana gamitin naman natin kasi sayang po talaga siya kung di po natin siya gagamitin. Okay? So, Office 365 is specially designed for education. It is remotely, remote learning ready. Okay? Um, it is always up to date. Lagi yung up, nag-update para um, yung mga new features na kukuha natin agad or magagamit natin, it can be installed up to 15 devices. O, no, take note, magagamit niyo po siya, yung account ninyo, sa 15 devices, no? Um, each account po to, ha, hindi po yung uh, 15 na accounts. So, for every account, you get a chance to install it in 15 devices. For example, um, 5 sa mobile phones, no? Uh, tapos 5 sa tablets ninyo, tapos 5 sa laptop ninyo, or sa desktop ninyo. Okay, so you have 15 uh devices or you have you can install your account on 15 devices no tapos it can store in the cloud up to one terabyte no diba laki one terabyte it is a great work in the cloud where you can collaborate with other on one document online so yung mga files natin safe niyan sa cloud tapos wherever you are wherever you go uh, kung nabaw ginawa mo yung work mo sa desktop mo sa laptop mo hindi mo yun sa bahay yung files mo na yun yung mga document na ginawa mo, ma-access mo yun kung nasaan ka man, with using your other devices, basta nakalagin yung Microsoft account mo, ma-access ma ma mo yung mga files ninyo na nasa cloud. Tapos yun nga, mapifree up mo pa yung space ng computer mo, hindi masyadong babagal yung devices, device ninyo kasi nga, yung files ninyo nasa cloud, wala siya sa, sa computer uh, physically or actually pwede naman siya i-download physically, pero kung gusto nyo na Hindi masyado na pupuno yung memory ng computer niyo, yung hard disk. Just put everything on the cloud at safe pa sila doon. Tapos yun nga, wherever you are, you can access them. Okay? So, yun nga, how to login your account. So, login to office.com to access your account. Ayan po, you go to office.com, tatype nyo lang sa browser niyan yan, then you click sign in. Okay? Pagka nagka-sign in na kayo, ayan, automatic makikita nyo na yung mga application na pwede nyong gamitin, okay? Tapos dito nyo rin may choice to install the office, okay? Uh, take note lang kung medyo mabagal po yung internet ninyo. Kapag you're going to install your uh, Office 365 online, um, kailangan nyo pong tsagay nyo yung uh, tagal kung, uh, ng pag-install nyo, okay? Uh, Tapos kung halimbawa, install nyo naman si Teams, click nyo lang yung tile ni Teams, ayan po siya. Excuse me. Kapag kinlik niyo si Teams, mapoprom kayo or lilipat kayo sa window na to, okay? So sa window na to, you have the option to get the Windows app or uh, use the app on the web instead. So yun yung ginawa ng iba, di ba? While you are watching this live event, uh, you are watching now uh, using the web instead habang wala pa kayong application, okay? So, once na nakinlik nyo yung download, ayan, get the Windows app. Pag kinlik nyo yung download, ayan. So, tasi, thank you for downloading this. Magpo-prompt to. At makikita nyo na sa download bar ninyo na nagda-download na si 
Microsoft Teams. Kapag natapos na yung pagka-download niya, pwede nyo na po yung i-install. Okay? So, download Microsoft Teams. Okay, so, saan natin siya pwedeng i-download? Yun nga, you can download using, it using yung sa browser. Go to office.com, then click uh, Teams. Or you can use, you can download it with your um, App Store sa iOS or with your uh, Google Play uh, in your, or Play Store in your Android. Okay? Um, so, uh, Microsoft Teams, to conduct meeting, to chat with uh, people, uh, yung Teams, uh, you can chat with your co-teachers, school staff, and students, okay? Yun nga, you can do meetings, you can chat, uh, you can do calls using sa Teams, um, tapos uh, you can share files, okay, with Microsoft Teams, tapos you can add uh, mga application na nandyan, okay, mamaya I will show you later kung saan makikita yung mga application para mas maging interactive at mas engaging pa yung uh, pag-conduct nyo ng remote learning or pag-conduct nyo ng uh, meeting with your uh, co-teachers, okay? Uh, tapos, you can connect globally with people. So, uh, basta may internet din sila, tapos mayroon silang teams, you can make a call, basta mayroon din silang account. Okay, so you can connect globally with people, okay? So, ayan, uh, Microsoft Teams for Education. So, for Microsoft uh, for free for education, okay, uh, dati kasi 250 lang po, ngayon in-increase na ni Microsoft Teams, no, para pa mag-conduct kayo ng online meeting, uh, up to 300 participants pwede pong mag-join dyan, okay, tapos you can record your meeting on the cloud, okay, pwede nyo record dyan, okay, Ta para gusto, 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 gusto nyo balikan, uh, to take down notes, okay, uh, dial in voice conferencing, okay, tapos, um, uh, yeah, you can, uh, have 10,000 attendees for an online live broadcast. Para yung ginagawa natin ngayon, okay? Um, we can have 10,000 attendees, okay? So, siguro eventually, dadagdagan din ni uh, Microsoft yan, itong 300, kasi dati 250 lang yan. So, siguro, eventually, maging 400 dyan, okay? Or 500. Who knows, di ba? Okay. So, when we do our online or do our transition with remote learning, we must provide a specific application that can be available nga across platforms. Ano ba yung sinasabi ko kanina ng across platforms, no? For example, si Microsoft Teams, yan, di ba? Available siya sa desktop, okay? Kung wala ng desktop si students or si teacher, available naman siya sa, sa tablet, okay? Kung naka-Apple ka, social ka ng konti, yan, uh, sa Apple, sa MacBook Pro niyo, MacBook Air, okay? Sa basa OS X10, 0.11 yung OS ninyo, yan, available, available siya kay MacBook, okay? Available siya kay iPhone, sa cell mga smartphones natin, available siya kay Android, okay? Kung wala kang mga ganito devices, available siya sa, sa browsers, okay? Sa browsers, uh, pwede yan kay Edge, okay? Pwede yan kay Chrome, pwede yan kay Safari. So, this is what I meant by saying, um, in doing our remote learning, we need to make sure na available siya across different platforms, across different devices na pwede mag yung application. So, ganyang ka-versatile si Microsoft Teams. So, pwede po siya sa mga platforms na to. Okay? Sana ko. Ayan. So, Microsoft uh, Teams okay? is an approach to effect effective online teaching and learning. Okay? So, um, because we can do our preparations, no? Get ready you, uh, for your lecture. We can do our preparations or we can get ready with our next class. Okay? Uh, habang gawin yung lesson planning nyo before. Tapos also, you can conduct your lesson in Microsoft Teams. Pwede kang mag-conduct ng lesson mo sa Microsoft Teams. Okay? Um, uh, ito. We can also do our uh, on-demand revision of our content, our assessment after discussion. So, lahat yan pwede natin gawin kay uh, Microsoft Teams. So, the functionality of Microsoft Teams is across the platform itself. Okay? Um, so, ayan. So, Microsoft Teams, let's talk about bandwidth requirements. Okay? Para magkaroon kayo ng konting idea. Okay, so, ano, baka sabihin nyo, baka malakas naman kumain ng internet dyan, um, o bagal gamitin. So, in the, uh, so, dito po, sa bandwidth requirements, team is designed to give the best audio video and content sharing experience regardless of your network conditions. So, automatic po siya nag-a-adjust 
kapag uh, ginagamit natin si Teams, mapa-audio man yan, video or content sharing. And that said, when bandwidth is insufficient, team prioritize audio quality over video quality. So, marinig pa rin kayo ng sadyante. So, halimbawa biglang bumagal yung internet ninyo, umulan, umulan. Tapos, uh, di ba, kapag umuulan, usually bumabagal yung internet natin. So, uh, tas, halimbawa, uh, at the moment, you're conducting a meeting or class with your student. So, uh, I may video ka, tapos uh, nagsasalita ka. So, para hindi maputol yung uh, connection mo with your students, uh, or hindi siya mag-chappy-chappy, ipaprioritize ni Teams yung audio ninyo over sa quality ng video, which is, mas importante yung naririnig ka ng mga bata, para lang nilang nandiyan ka pa rin, syempre, no? So, where bandwidth isn't limited, Teams optimize media quality including up to 1080p video resolution or up to 30 frames per second for video and 15 frames per second for content and high fidelity audio, okay? So yeah, uh, let's talk about guest account naman. So maybe you're wondering or you're, you're, you're asking, paano yung mga sadyante? Sila wala namang Microsoft account. So who, uh, sila yung, let's talk about guest account. So who is guest, okay? So a guest is someone who is an, an employee, uh, a student or member of your organization. They don't have a school or work account with your organization. So wala silang account sa, sa DepEd. So pero yung nga, nabanggit ko kanina, Nasa plano naman yan, nung palang pang niro-roll out palang ni DepEd yan, tinitraining palang yung mga ICT coordinators, uh, pinaplano na po yan ni DepEd and ni Microsoft, uh, na ibigyan talaga ng account yung mga estudyante natin. Okay? So, uh, understand the limitations for guests. So, the guest experience has limitations lang for now. So, make sure you understand the guest experience so you don't try to fix something that isn't a problem. So, kailangan nyo intindihan ano yung mga uh, pwedeng gawin lang ni guest. Sabi niya, bakit di pwede ganyan? So, you need to understand. So, for example, here, here's a list of some of the functionality that isn't available to a guest in Microsoft Teams. Okay? Ito po. So, guest accounts. OneDrive for business education. Um, they can search people search. Uh, they cannot search people outside of Teams. So, calendar, wala. Schedule meetings or meeting details. So, pwede nyo lang silang invite. So, pwede pa rin siya kayo sadyante kasi actually siya sadyante. Hindi naman siya mag-schedule ng uh, meeting nyo sa kanila. Diba? Si teacher ang mag-schedule. So, uh, pwede pa rin siya. So, organizational chart, create or revise a team. Okay? Browse for a team. Hindi na pwedeng gawin yan. Tapos, upload files to a person-to-person -person chat. Kasi si teacher for now lang pwedeng mag-upload for uh, kapag guest accounts. Yun yung limitation niya. Okay? Hmm. Okay, so ito. Is, this is an example of the interface ni guest account. Okay? So kay guest account, ito lang yung makikita natin niya. Yung activities na nangyayari sa teams niya. Pwede siya mag-chat. Okay? Uh, pwede siya mag-open uh, yung mga teams kung saan siya in-admit teacher. Okay? Pwede niya makita yung mga files na nandyan na sinishare ni teacher. Okay? Um, tapos kay, ito yung kay ano, uh, sa account natin. Yan yung mga nakikita natin, di ba? Mas madami. Okay? Compared kay, kay guest account. Okay? So, merong activity, chat, yan yung teams. Click kayo ng teams nyo. Mag-assign kayo ng assignment. By clicking, clicking the assignment button, bigyan nyo ng assignment si sadyante. Mag-schedule kayo ng meeting with your co-teacher sa department niyo Tapos schedule ng meeting with your, with your student. Make a call. Okay? Tapos um, share files or view your shared files. Tapos yung mga apps, yan, dito nyo makikita paano nyo add yung mga apps, okay? So, ito yung mga tiles na makikita ninyo. Okay, at this juncture, okay, so, um, tanggalin ko muna tong PowerPoint ko, pakita ko sa inyo yung paano gamitin si Teams. Okay, I'll just share my window. Yan. Okay. So, ayan po. Ito po si uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay, nakikita nyo. Okay, so here we have activity. Nandito yung mga recent activities na ginawa nyo or nangyayari sa Teams ninyo. Okay. Uh, yung mga chat. Okay. Pag when you click chat, here, um, 
Dito yung makita yung mga chat na, mga chat chat yung tao, tapos you can join na chat, halimbawa dito, sa meeting namin. Uh, tapos sa teams, okay, ayan, when you click teams, dito kayo pwede mag-create ng mga teams per class niyo or teams per uh, department or grade level, kung gagawa kayo ng teams sa, sa school with your co-teacher. So, how do you create a team? Okay, so by the way, this is what we call tiles. No? Tiles po yan, yung mga kita na, white tiles ang tawag dyan. Yan yung mga teams na na-create ko na po dati or yung mga teams na naka-join ako. So, halimbawa dito sa TBL ICT grade 11. Okay. Yan. Okay. Ito, ito po yung team na ginawa ni Ma'am Melo dito tas sinali niya ako last time. Okay. Or itong grade 12 yung MIL na ginawa ako. Ayan. So, yung conversation, no? Nakapag-share ng images. Okay. Um, you can share files. You can share forms. You can send quizzes. Okay. So, how do you create a team or join a team? Paano kayo mag-create or join? You click here. On the upper right, you will see join or create team. Just click that. Okay. So, here. Uh, you can create the team or you can join a team with the code. Later, I will show you how to, to use the code or get the code or how, how to join a team with the code. So, kiklik nyo to pag may binigay na code sa inyo yung uh, school head or yung co-teacher ninyo para to join the meeting or yung pag binigyan ninyo ng code yung sudyante ninyo, you will just click this to join uh, the class, okay? Or to create a team, just simply click create team. Okay, so click nyo yan. Uh, pan, uh, clicking create team, we have four options. Okay? You can create a team for a class, discussion group, projects, and assignment. Ito po. Okay, a team for professional learning community, educator working group. Yan, pag sa mga teachers or school heads. Okay, yan, ito gagawin natin. Sa staff, school administration and development, mga nasa office. Okay, tapos others, club, Okay, study groups after school activities. So, for example, we're going to create a class team. So, just click class team. Click po natin to. Okay. Tapos, we, we will be prompted with this window. Okay. So, create a team. You put a name for your team. For example, um, grade 12, kung are. Okay. I'm going to create uh, grade 12. So, you can add description if you want. So, let's skip that for uh, for now. Uh, pag nalagay nyo na ng name yung team, click next. Ito po, oh, click next. Ayan, tapos create nyo na, uh, create na ni Microsoft Teams yung team na ginagawa nyo. Tapos, here, on the next window, you can add people or students or teachers to your team. So, meron dalawang tab dyan. Si search a teacher or si student. So, let's say, for example, uh, mag ko ng student. So, let's make muna yung mga co-teachers ko sa senior high na sudyante ko. Let's say, for example, add ko si Karen. Sudyante ko siya kung ngari. Okay. Tapos, add ko si Sir, si Rogel Salvador. Sudyante ko siya kung ngari. Si uh, Christine Corpus. Saka si, sino ba? Hmm. Si Bernadette. Bernadette. Esteban. Yan. So, type nyo lang po siya. Automatic po yan. Ayan. Okay. Bernadette Esteban. Okay. Tapos click add. Kung maraming marami na ako ng add. So, just click add. So, mapupunta na po sila dun sa team na kinicreate natin. Tapos just click close. Okay. So, automatic makikreate na po yung team nyo. So, ito po yung makikita natin upon creating the team. Okay? So, here, uh, you can click meet now kapag imi-meet nyo na sila. So, di ko po siya makiklik nyo kasi nasa live event po tayo. Um, Madi-disconnect po kasi ako. So, you can click meet now to meet your students. Okay? Um, you have tabs here. Okay? Uh, yung mga pinopost nyo, mga files na isi-share ninyo, yung class notebook, na iti-discuss nila ma'am Eds. Okay, by the way, take note, uh, basic lang muna po yung papakita ko ngayon kasi mag-introduce po ng buong interface ni 
Philippines is si Ma'am H and si Ma'am Cas po sa inyo. Okay? So class notebooks, diyan papasok si OneNote. So pwede na pong uh, magkaroon ng notebook uh, online si estudyante, hindi na kailangan nung uh, yung physical note po na binibili. Yung pa, dito parang siyang binder actually. Okay? Um, pwede kayo mag-assign ng assignment by clicking assignment. Okay? Um, pwede you can um, check the grades kapag nag-grade na kayo. Okay? So, ayan. So, files. Tapos dito, you can change the image or yung parang primary picture ng team niya para ma-identify ma nyo kagad. So, meron mga naka-suggested na bigay na ng icon ni MS Team sa inyo or you can upload your own. Okay? For example, I want to use this para kay grade 12 ko. Update. Saving changes. Ayan. So, automatic mapapalitan na po yan. Tapos here, on our team, di ba grade 12 to, meron tayong general channel. Okay? So, sa general channel, sa general channel po, um, dito nyo makikita ano, lahat ng sadyante ninyo. Dito sila pwede mag uh, karoon ng conversation, sharing of files together. Okay? They can upload materials here or find help and training dito sa general. So, how do you create yung tinatawag natin na um, i-divide natin sila into groups? So, halimbawa sa grade 12, gagawa ka ng mga different channel. Okay? So, paano yon? You click dito sa ellipsis button. Okay? This is where you can get to manage your team. Ayan po, you manage your team. This is where you can add your channel, okay? Uh, this is also where you can add uh, mga members pa kung kulang pa yung sadyante nga uh, ina-add ninyo. Tapos this is where uh, you can, if you gusto nyo yung i-leave yung team, uh, click yung leave team, edit team, or get link to team, okay? So let's first, let's try um, adding a channel muna. Okay, skip muna natin si manage team. So click add channel. To add channel, halimbawa, um, sa grade 12 na yan, um, Ipag-separate natin yung per section. Kung wari, uh, grade 12 yung na-handle ko. So, halimbawa, meron akong housekeeping. Housekeeping na section. Okay? Tapos here, you can set the privacy to standard or private. Kapag ka standard po, uh, anyone, uh, every, any student na naka-add sa grade 12 teams ninyo, makakapag-join pa rin sila dun sa channel na ng housekeeping. But since uh, kapag uh, separate into section ang gagawin natin, let's make it into private. Okay? So, click next. So, search students kung wari na gusto natin i-add dyan. Kung wari si uh, Sir Rogel. Dito siya. Tsaka si uh, Bernadette kung wari. Okay? Dito sila sa housekeeping. So, add natin. Okay, tapos click done. So, ayan. So, ano ito yung sinasabi ko na private? Nakita nyo meron siyang, ano, lock dyan or icon ng lock. Ibig sabihin private to, hindi to makikita ng ibang studyante. Hindi sila pwede mag-chat dyan. Okay, so private siya. This is exclusive itong housekeeping channel na to for housekeeping students only. Okay, tapos add pa tayo ng isa. Lipsis po to on add channel. Kung wari yums. Okay, tapos um, click add, private muna natin yan. Okay, uh, tapos again, another channel. Say for example. Ibiti ko nga rin dito. Okay. Ayan. Okay. Standard. Sorry ah. Hindi ko na private yung isa. So remove muna natin si this is how you delete channel, no? So click the ellipsis button do sa channel, tapos delete this channel. Okay? Gawa nyo natin si Yums. Ellipsis button, add channel. Okay? Then let's make yung channel ni Yums, turn it into private para kay Yums student lang. Ayun. Ah, 
okay make it private tapos um, click next add natin si students Christine Corpus si Mang Karen okay tapos click add kung wari mong sudyante ko sila then kapag na add just click done here click done so yan na so we have two private channels for two different section and one channel uh, on a general channel for group activity now where uh, everyone can join here same with general okay para ma separate na lang yung mga sections saka yung mga activity na papagawa nyo depende sa sa grade level okay or sa subject okay na gagawa nyo ng teams okay so that's how you create a channel now how do you manage a team okay so click the ellipsis button ito po click the ellipsis button and click manage team okay so dito you can set uh kung sino pwedeng maging owner or member okay yung members actually pag ayan makikita nyo is this by nad ko si si Bernadette si Christine si Karen, yung mga sadyante ko, si, si Roger na yung mga sadyante ko. Okay, you can actually here mute yung mga students. Ano, ano ba, magulo yung sadyante nyo, maingay sa klase ng gugulo. Gusto nyo yung um, i-mute siya. So, you can mute that student. Ano ba, mute natin si Bernadette. Okay, tapos, yan, hindi na siya makakapag-chat uh, or ingay dun sa online class natin. Okay, so example lang po yan. Okay, um, ano pa, okay. So dear, kung meron gusto mag-join, halimbawa nagbigay kayo ng team code, okay? Um, dito makita yung mga pending. Okay, settings. Okay, ah, dito sa, when you click uh, manage team, di ba, manage team, uh, if you want to get the team code na ibibigay sa sadyante, click nyo lang yung settings. Tapos here, go to team code. Ayan po, tapos you click generate. Okay? So, kapag once you click in generate, magkakaroon po ng team code. Ayan, no? OM880TG. Ito po yung code na ikakapin ninyo at bibigay nyo sa mga sadyante ninyo para makapag-join sila dun sa team na uh, kinrate ninyo kung di nyo sila na-add uh, dun sa kinrate ninyo. So, you can give them the code. Just copy the code. Tapos, paste nyo lang dun sa any uh, messaging platform na pwede nyo ibigay yung code. So, that's Teams. Then, next, sa calendar. Here. So, dito tayo pwedeng mag-schedule ng meeting. So, ayan, di ba nakita nyo sa calendar ko yung kinlate na live event ni Sir Lingat. Okay? So, pwede kayo mag-schedule ng meeting nyo dito. Halimbawa, dito sa Wednesday, August 5, um, at 1pm. Okay? Click nyo lang yan. Tapos, add kayo ng title ng meeting nyo. Sabihin nyo, kung wari, um, Department meeting. Okay, I hope nakakasunod po kayo. Okay, so click nyo yung uh, title ng meeting. Are required attendees, yung mga attendees na dapat na nandoon. Okay, so halimbawa, yun nga. Add ko sila mga co-teachers ko. Okay, uh, si... Patrick. Okay. Uh, kung wari, gusto ko nandiyan sa sigla Sir Glenn Moore. Mimiting tayo. Sir Glenn. Abaya. Sir Roger. Okay. Sir Michael. Okay. So, yan. So, pag na-add nyo na yung mga required attendees, Okay, tapos yung schedule, ayan, August 5, pwede nyo i-change yung time dito, ayan, kung mungunin yung kumari ng 2 p.m., okay, um, tapos yun, kung may channel kayo yung kinreate, ayan, yung sa, 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 sa chat channel, yung mga gusto nyo i-meet na sadyante or channel ng mga sections, pwede nyo i-choose dito, okay, so automatic lahat ng member ng channel na yun, ma-add sa meeting na, uh, sineset ninyo by clicking add channel. Okay? So, wag na muna natin yan. Okay? Tapos, you can add here description uh, of the meeting kung wari. Okay? So, ano ba department meeting nga to? Kung wari, uh, talk about uh, about 
conduct uh, conducting the virtual graduation. Tapos click niyo lang yung send. Ayan. Okay. So by clicking send, automatic makaka-receive ng notification or email yung mga may account na inad natin dun sa meeting. Mga pasadyante man yan or teachers. Basta ni schedule niyo siya dyan, inad niyo yung mga participants dun sa meeting or sa class, sa remote, sa online class, automatic makaka-receive po sila ng notification. So that's calendar. Okay, for calls, you can uh, create call directly. Basta yung mga i-call niyo dapat nandun sa contacts ninyo. Okay? So ayan, so halimbawa ko ito yung mga contacts ko. Ito yung mga co-teacher ko sa CAT. Okay, so pwede directly, pwede, pwede ko lang i-call by clicking their name. So halimbawa, i-call ko kung wari si, ano, si Sir Jamson. O click ko lang yung uh, name ni Sir Jamson. Tapos lilitaw po itong window na to. Tapos I can make a voice call or um, give him a video call or send him a message or a chat. Okay, dito po yan sa calls. Okay, basta nasa contacts po ninyo yung uh, person na ikokontakin nyo or student na kokontakin nyo. Now, how do you add contact dito po sa calls na to or sa contacts na to? In the upper right corner, you have this add contact button. Ito po siya. Uh, if you can see on your uh, screen, on your window, just click add contact. Okay? Tapos lilito po itong small box or small uh, window na to. So, let's say, for example, add ko si Ma'am Eds. Okay? Wala siya sa contact ko. Just click add. Dilitaw yan automatic. Click nyo lang add. So, automatically, mapupunta po siya dito sa list ng contacts ko. So, let's do it again para makita ninyo. Click add contact here. Tapos, halimbawa, add ko po si Ma'am Cassandra. Okay. Tapos, click add. Yan lang yan. Automatic po, nandito na siya. Okay. So, that's how you add contacts in your calls tab. Okay. For files naman here, on this uh, tab or in this button sa files, dito nyo makikita yung mga senior yung files sa mga sadyante ninyo or sa mga co-teachers ninyo or sa mga co-workers ninyo or sa mga taong binigyan, basta sa mga taong binigyan nyo ng files. Dito nyo makikita po yan sa files button. Actually, itong mga files po na to, itong mga nakikita nyo yung files, lahat po yan nandun sa OneDrive ninyo. Yung mga files na sinishare nyo nyo sa MS Teams, automatic po pumapasok po yan kay OneDrive. Okay? For adding apps naman po here, just click apps. Okay? So, this is where you can add uh, mga apps na gusto nyo gamitin para sa uh, remote learning sa online class. Halimbawa, let's say we want to add Kahoot. So, search nyo lang Kahoot. Okay? Ayan, no? si si Kahoot. Click nyo lang yan. Tapos, click add to team. Okay, select a channel to start using Kahoot. Okay, so saan channel niya siya gusto ng gamitin? Halimbawa, gusto ko siyang gamitin sa ano ko, dun sa entrepreneurship ko na grade 12. Click ko lang yan. Tapos set up. Okay po. So yan, automatic, masishare po siya dun sa entrepreneurship grade 12 ko. Okay, uh, tapos I just need, you just need to log in using your uh, login account. So, close na muna natin yan. Kasi so, i-demo po yan sa inyo ng mga kasama po pong resource speaker. Okay. So, this is Microsoft Teams. Okay. So, I hope uh, na-introduce ko sa inyo yung basic on how to use Teams. Don't worry po, uh, yung uh, full discussion po nito para mas ma-enlighten pa kayo on how to use it. Um, I-provide po sa inyo yan ni Ma'am Els and me. Ma'am Cassandra, on the next day. Okay? So, let's go back to our um, slide. Okay? So, wait lang po. Okay? Let me share my slide. So, that's MS Teams, okay? So, Geotik started naman with Microsoft Forms, okay? So, what is Microsoft Forms? Microsoft Forms is uh, like si Google Forms, di ba kay Google Forms? Uh, 
alam na alam na po natin ano yung forms kay Google Forms, nag-a-attendance nga po tayo dyan, di ba? Tapos dyan tayo laging nagre-register ng uh, uh, mga inattendan natin na webinars na pinaprovide ni DepEd sa atin, okay? ni TCSD sa atin. Okay? So Microsoft Forms, meron sariling forms si uh, Microsoft where you can make your own survey also and uh, you can make uh, quizzes for your students. Okay? So just go to... Um, to your office.com sign in again tapos uh, lagay niyo lang po yung username niyo yung email niyo okay uh, take note po yung email uh, email account po natin sa 365 di ba uh, dep email po yung nilink nila diyan yung difference po diyan uh, meron po siyang r3-2 okay after ng at sign. Halimbawa, um, Glenn, okay, John, okay, dot Wong, okay, after ng at sign, di ba dati at deped.go at that page na siya. After ng at sign, uh, meron mo nang, lalagay niyo muna yung R3-2. Okay, ito, isa to sa mga common mistake po ng mga tinatry i-login yung account nila kapag kayo, uh, gusto nilang i-activate. Okay? Hindi kakalimutan po nilang ilagay yung R3-2 or minsan po uh, sa yung R3-2 instead na dash, nalalagay po nila underscore. I-check nyo muna po yon bago po kayo mag-request ng reset. Okay? Para po magamit nyo na yung account nyo. So, after ng R3-2, susundan nyo na po yan ng uh, .deped.gov.ph Okay, ganun po siya, glenjan.wong at r3-2.deped.gov.page. Kung ano po yung account nyo, ganun po siya, lalagyan siya ng r3-2. Okay, tapos click next, then you enter your password, then click sign in. Again, pupunta po kayo dito, then just look for forms. When you click forms, dyan na po kayo makakapag-create ng uh, quiz ninyo and survey. Okay. So, pagkakinlik niyo yung forms na to, yan yung icon na to, okay, dito po kayo mapoprom sa window na to. Automatic i-welcome po kayo ni uh, Microsoft. Hi, Glenn Jang, welcome to Microsoft Forms. So, automatically here, you can create a new form. So, later I will show you how to create a form. Okay. Ah, sige, pakita ko na muna sa inyo how to create a form before we go to our next topic. Okay, stop sharing. Just, I will just share my browser sa inyo. Okay. So, how do we create forms? Okay, how do we create quiz using our um, 365 account? So, go to office.com. Kaya na nasabi ko kanina. Just go to office.com. Okay, then you click forms. Yan po. Pagka-click nyo ng forms, okay, close ko naman na ito ha. Si click ready one muna natin. So just click uh, yung forms button or forms tab. Automatic here you can create new form or just close that muna. Okay, so ito po yung interface niya. Ganyan yung itsura niya. So here you can see yung mga forms na ginawa ko na. Okay, yun yung summer po kasi nag Every day we're conducting um, daily health check with our co-teacher, no? So here you can create a new form for a survey dito, okay? And a new form for a new quiz. So para sa ide-demo ko po sa inyo, new quiz lang muna tayo. Just so, click new quiz, okay? For, so for example, you're creating a quiz. Um, wait lang natin na. <clears throat> Medyo nagpabagal na. Okay, so yan. So click on your quiz, you can give a title for your quiz. For example, this is my um, quiz 1.1 for uh, the first quarter. Ganyan po kasi magbigay ng quiz, lagi ko nilalagay. So ibig sabihin ng 1.1, first quiz for the first quarter for my uh, media and information literacy subject. Okay, so that's the title. You can add description. Halimbawa, uh, you can give your instruction uh, about choose the correct answer. And, or you, 
write the correct answer, type the correct answer, okay? So for the description, you can add uh, an image together with the title bar or the title head, okay? So halimbawa, um, you have the option to search for the image, okay? Or you can get it from your OneDrive or you have the, the option to upload. So let's try uploading, no? Para makita nyo. So click upload, okay? So I'm going to get the yung logo ng, ng CAT. Ang ko pa nilagay. Um, I think it's here. So, ayan. Let's click open. Okay. So, maglo-load po siya dyan. So, habang hinihintay po natin yan. Ayan. So, here, you can add your questions na ibibigay nyo sa quiz ninyo. So, this is quiz for my subject, uh, Media Information Literacy. So, let's add a uh, question. Click the add new. Okay, so you have here, mga choices. Anong klaseng question na bibigay nyo? Okay, if you're conducting a, a rating form or a poll for your student, you can click rating. If you want to put date, you can put date. Okay, yan kung ang, ang question nyo is halimbawa, um, what year did and uh, Marcos declared martial law. Okay. So, dito, pwede nyo yung lagay nyo lang sagot, yung date. Okay? Tapos yung put points, ang bawa ilang points siya, sabi natin, two points kung wari. Tapos make it required. Click nyo yung required para hindi yan skip ni student. Okay? Tapos, um, click add new. Bawat choice naman. Okay? Uh, halimbawa, um, who is the father of Philippine Ima? Kumari. Okay? Uh, Kumari si um, natin, Larry Alcala. Okay. Kasi, na po, kasi, no. Tapos, si, uh, first travel law. Okay. So, in here, sa so pag sa option, pwede nyo nang i-specify what is the correct answer. Okay. So, click, yun, know, alibaba, ang sangot kasi dito, kasi na po mo siya, no. So, click correct answer. Tapos, you can add more option if you want. You can put points. Let's say, for example, one point yan. Okay? Tapos, make sure na nakaklik yung required. Okay? Tapos, let's add another one. Um, text kung are. Okay? Who is known as the first published Filipino Artunis. Okay? So, they will put their answer here, make it required. You can add the correct answer. Okay? So, ang answer kasi dyan is Jose Rizal. Okay? Tapos, um, okay, if you're done, kumari, done na tayo. Okay? Nagyan ko ba ng points? Okay, one point, two points. Okay, so ayan. So, here, nakapag-create na kayo ng quiz. Okay? So, uh, to share this quiz, kiklik nyo lang po yung share dito, okay? Or you can add team muna. Okay, so add team para medyo engaging naman siya. Pili kayo ng design dyan. Kung ngari, um, this one, kung ngari, yan. Okay, for the team. Tapos you can click share, okay? So, to share the this uh, quiz to your students, okay? Um, you click share. Tapos habang wala pa naman silang account, okay? pwede niyong i-choose anyone with the link can respond. So, para kahit wala pa silang 365 accounts yung mga sadyante nyo, uh, basta binigay niyo yung link na to. Okay, ito po yung link. Copy niyo yan. Okay, anyone with the link can respond. Bigay niyo lang sa kanila yan. Makakasagot po sila. Kasi po, kapag kinlik po natin only people in my organization, yung mga people lang within our organization na binigyan ni DepEd ng account, ang pwedeng mag-answer doon sa 
quiz na kinreate ninyo. Okay, you copy the link. Okay, make sure na na yan. Anyone with the link or kung meron ng account yung mga estudyante natin, only people in my organization can respond. So for now, anyone with the link, just copy, tapos paste nyo lang to any messaging app na ginagamit ninyo. Or you can give them a QR code. Okay? Pwede nyo siyang bigyan ng QR code. Ayan, download nyo, tapos um, iprint ninyo, tapos scan na lang nila or send nyo sa, sa mga chat box nila. Okay? So that's how you share your quiz with your uh, students. Okay? To preview your quiz naman, just click preview. Ayan, kung paano siya makikita ng mga sadyante ninyo. Okay? Uh, paano siya makita with your computer or with their cellphone? Click mobile. Ayan. I click mobile here. So, makikita nyo, paano nyo makikita ni sadyante sa cellphone ninyo niya yung quiz na binigay ninyo. Or quiz na kinread ninyo. Okay? So, I hope nakasunod po kayo. So, that's how simple it is to create a quiz. So, parang same lang din siya pag-create ng survey. So, what I want you to do, teachers, uh, is to explore this uh, platform or this uh, uh, application ni 365 in creating yung mga quiz or mga sitworks or mga polls or mga surveys na bibigay po natin sa mga uh, sadyante po natin. So, that's Microsoft Forms. Okay? So, we'll just uh, balik tayo sa slide natin. Saglit lang po ah. Ayan. Na-exit ko pala. So, wait lang po. Okay, so going back to our slide, ayan, Office 365, Password Reset and Management, okay? So Office 365, Password Reset and Management. So sa Password Reset process for DepEd Office 365 account, okay, um, if self-service, Password reset or what we call SSPR, baka narinig na po yan, SSPR means self-service password reset, is not enabled in your account, uh, you may contact your DITO for password reset. Okay? Uh, please note that processing time uh, for password resets upon submission may take time. No? Kasi pinapadala pa po yan sa central office. Okay? Usually it takes only 7 days to do that, pero sa dami yata na nag request ngayon, Medyo na, na patagal, no? So, during your first login, uh, in your Office 365, you are being asked to provide an alternate email, okay? And phone number for your authentic to authenticate in case you lost or forget your password. O, so, isa po to sa mga common mistake na mga iba na akala nila nung in-open nila yung account nila, uh, nilagay yung temporary password. Okay na yun. Kasi you need to uh, give an alternate email and your phone number. Okay, tapos uh, I can give uh, mga security questions para ma-retrieve po nyo yung password nyo or ma-reset nyo yung password niyo in case na na-forget nyo sila. Okay, so make sure na pag binalik na po yung mga account nyo, yung mga kasama, kasama po natin na hindi na-activate, make sure na ilalagay nyo po yung alternate email niyo, isa-set nyo po yan, saka yung phone number, saka security questions. So, para anytime na makalimutan nyo yung password niyo, you will be able to reset it uh, by yourselves. Okay? So, password reset process for DepEd Office 365 account. So, kanina, yun nga, if not enabled yung SSPR natin. Eh, what if enabled yung SSPR natin? Okay? So, proceed and click Forget password button. So input the required information like your phone number, your uh, kung alternate email yung sinet niya jan, or kung nagset kayo ng mga security question to recover your account. You you may do so, no? Tapos you will receive kung phone number siya, you will receive an SMS code na yun ilalagay niyo don kapag kami maglalagin kayo to reset the password or yung email containing the authentication code. Okay, so you input the code and change your password. Okay? So note, no, it is advisable to change your password every 90 days for security reasons. Suggestion lang naman po ito. No? Kung ayaw nyo na basta-basta mga hack ko yung mga account ninyo, um, 
it is advised by uh, mga ICT people okay, not to change your password every 90 days. Pero nasa sa inyo naman po yung kung gagawin ninyo. No? This is just for uh, security reasons. Okay? Di ba nga si SSS every 90 days ni reset ni yung password natin? That's for security reasons. So you may do so also in uh, changing your password in our account. Okay? Not only in 365 but with your other um, account in using online. Okay? So uh, here is an example on how you can you may reset your password. So naging example ko po dito yung case Sir Mike, okay, ako po kasi nag-activate dun sa kanya. Okay, so halimbawa si Sir Mike inattempt in niya na ilagay yung password niya. Okay, uh, tapos kinlik niya yung sign in. Nilagay niya yung password na alam niya. Okay, tapos nilagay niya yun, uh, nakalimutan pala niya yung password. So you will be prompted here. So, I know yung some of you are familiar with this na. Okay, your account or password is incorrect. If you don't remember password, reset it now. So that's what you're going to click to reset your password. Kung sinet po niya yung SMS authentication or yung email authentication ninyo or yung mga security questions, you, you may click this, okay? Tapos, ididirect po niya kayo dito sa page na to. So get back into your account. So who are you? Sabi, tanongin ka niya, baka kasi naman uh, inahack lang ng ibang tao yung account ninyo, okay? So lalagay dyan yung user ID ninyo, yung um, at r 3 2depedgovph tapos lagay nyo po itong CAPTCHA na to, in here, then you click next, uh, and then kapag uh, na-type nyo na, yan, next siya, okay, so in here, ang sinet ko kasi dito, email and security question lang, no, kasi um, di ko naman kasama sa Sir Mike nung sinet ako yun sa kanya, so email, uh, my alternate alternate email. So, pag chinews ko yun, or security questions, may sasagutin na akong questions, pwede ko nang i-reset yung password. Kung SMS siya, magta-text nga ng code sa nyo. So, in here in the example, email my uh, alternate email, tapos click email. Okay, so once i-click nyo yung email, okay, uh, lilipat siya sa window na to. Dito nyo, on this box, this is where you're going to put the code uh, to reset your password na na-send sa email. So, once na naka-receive kayo sa email nyo ng ganito, ayan, KMS Online, sa so email nyo, click nyo yan, tapos makikita nyo sa loob yung code. Okay? Yung code na yan nag-expire, kaya dapat ilagay nyo siya kaagad. So, temporary code lang yan. So, pag na pinatagal nyo yung pag, paglagay dito. Sir Glenn, Sir Glenn, yes, ma'am. Excuse me po, um, just to butt in lang po, um, um, some of our participants po are um, um, sending their yes, comments. Wala daw po nakikita sa screen, sir. Ay, wala. Yes, sir. Thank you po. <laughs> Sorry. Wait lang ha. Yung internet siguro. Wait lang po. Ma'am, ma nakikita na? Ma yes, sir. Go ahead po. Thank okay, you po. po. Okay. So, saan kaya nag-start? So, balik na lang ako ng konti. Okay, so for resetting your password, uh, in case you forgot, okay, here's an example. So, halimbawa, yun nga, you're going to reset your password. Okay? So, you want to tinipe yung password nyo, nakalimutan nyo siya. Okay? So, ipoprom kayo ng window na to. So, your account or password is incorrect. So, you may do so click reset it now. Okay? You may do so click your, yung reset it now. Okay? So, tapos, you will prom be prompted with this in this window. Ayan po. Okay? So, you type your user ID and then you type the CAPTCHA, then click next. Okay? Yan, pag na-type na, next ulit. Tapos, uh, dito niya yung verification step. Okay, sa so verification step, kung sinet niyo yung SMS, mayroon kayo makikita ng cellphone dito. 
okay, or SMS, tapos email address, or answer any security questions. So, in this example, ang sinet ko is email my alternate email. So, make sure na yung ginawa nyo, sinet yung alternate email is your personal account or personal email. So, click nyo yung email, and then, uh, you will be transferred on this window where you're going to encode yung code na sinend naman sa email ninyo ni uh, administrator ng 365 account natin. Okay, so, once na nakareceive kayo ng ganitong message sa email ninyo, open nyo lang po yan, and then you get the code inside that email. Okay, so take note po ulit that that code uh, nag-expire po yan. No? So, within a minute or so, or two, uh, kailangan nyo mag-request ulit kapag hindi nyo po nagamit agad yung code. So, that is done for security reason also. Okay, so pag natype nyo na, click next. And then, this is where you will be able to create a new password for your account. Okay, so enter a new password. Excuse me, the usual. Tapos confirm the new password. Just click, just click finish. Okay. So, ayan. So, nakapaglagay na tayo ng password. Make sure that your password is strong enough na hindi yun ma-infiltrate ng mga hackers. So, there you'll be able to get back into your account na. So, so just click here. Ma-open na po yung account ninyo. Okay? So, I hope nakasunod po kayo. Okay? So, for Office 365 security naman, okay, um, you may do so uh, secure your uh, documents. No, how do you do that? Okay. So uh, by the way, pala password guidelines. Okay, your password should be at least eight characters long. Should contain upper and small case letters. Um, must have different password on different accounts. Okay. Um, change your password for every ninety days and do not share your password. Okay. Do not put your password on your uh, sticky note as ididikit nyo sa computer niyo sa school. Okay, avoid reusing or recycling password. Madali pong mahak yan. Okay, so file level encryption. Why? Kasi uh, bakit natin kailangan ng i-encrypt yung mga files natin? Very important po kasi ito para hindi basta-basta ma-open yung mga files, especially kung confidential po yan. Okay, so in here, sa Office 365, sa file, under file level encryption, pwede po natin encrypt kasi yung uh, Word document natin, uh, yung mga um, Excel document natin saka yung PowerPoint document natin. Okay, so pupunta lang po kayo dun sa file, tapos click nyo lang po yung info. Okay, tapos click po nyo yung protect this document. So once na click nyo yung protect this document, i-encode nyo lang po yung password na gusto ninyo. Okay, so mapoprotect na po yung document ninyo. Same with Excel. You click file dun sa taas ng screen ninyo, then you click info. Then, click protect worksheet. Okay? Tapos, lagay lang kayo ng password. No? So, ipoprom niya kayong ganyan. You put your password. Okay? Then, you confirm your password. And click OK. Automatic. Ayan, malalak po yung uh, document ninyo. Okay? Yung file nyo. So, ganun din po yung process sa, sa Word or sa publisher. Okay? Basta sa 365 um, document applications po natin. Okay? Okay, for sharing files naman, okay, so how do you share files uh, using your OneDrive account? Okay, malapit na po tayo matapos. So let me just show you how do you share your uh, files on your OneDrive account. Okay, so pag nakalagin na po kayo sa Office 365 ninyo, Okay, just click OneDrive. Hintayin lang po natin. Okay, so here you will be able to see the files that you have on your OneDrive. So, yan po yung mga naka-upload kong files ko. So, meron naka-folders. Okay, so nababaka po automatic lahat ng files ko dito. So halimbawa, I want to share my ano, uh, uh, copy of my attendance to my co-teacher. So how do I share that? So dito, click nyo lang po yung check button here. So once you click the check button, you will be already able to share your 
file with your uh, kung kanino naman siya isi-share. So, click here yung share button or meron din pong share button here. Okay? So, click share. Ayan. So, kakaroon po ng window. Tapos, uh, pwede nyo iset po dyan for security. Anyone with the link can edit or yung mga nasa region, mga nakasama lang po nasa organization natin or people with existing access, mga binigyan ng access before. Okay? You can check kung if you're going to allow editing, uh, pwede lang edit yung sinin nyo sa kanila or kung ayaw nyo nang ma-edit nila para view lang, click nyo lang yan, uh, check nyo allow, uh, allow editing or uncheck it para hindi ma-edit. Okay? Tapos you can give a password if you want to. Okay? Tapos uh, when you're done, um, just click apply. Okay? Tapos uh, kung wari, share ko na yan kay Ma'am Karen na lang. Ayan. Tapos, ayan. So, once na na-add nyo lahat ng taong ipagsashare ninyo, uh, click send, makaka-receive po sila ng email or copy the link. Tapos, get, uh, yung link na yun, send nyo lang sa any messaging app. Pero the safest way is to click it. Just click send. And they will receive an email notification that you are sharing a file with them. So, that's how you share file with your um, OneDrive. Okay? So, balik tayo sa slide natin. So, yan yung pinakita ko kanina sa OneDrive. Okay. So, balik lang natin yung Flipgrid activity. So, I hope nakapag-join na kayo dun sa flipgrid.com tapos yung code na binigay ko po kanina sana na screenshot po niyo so you share uh, what are your thoughts regarding synchronous and asynchronous learning okay so uh, tapos what do you think would be better for your teachers and learners okay yung pinakamaganda daw may price daw kay kay ma'am Eds <laughs> okay kay ma'am Ma Cassandra ay kay Sir Ling daw may price <laughs> yung pinakamagandang uh, is share na thought regarding uh, what are uh, dito sa mga question natin ito regarding uh, staying connected through remote learning. Sige so, po, <laughs> may pinakamagandang response dyan, sir. Ibibigay na ni Ma'am Etsy Snow tsaka si Storm. <laughs> o yan po, ah, meron po kayong price kay Ma'am Etsy. Ibibigay daw po niya si Snow tsaka si Storm. Kung friend niyo po siya sa Facebook, uh, maaaring nakita niyo na po si Snow tsaka si Storm. <laughs> Kaya yan po. So with that, um, I think I'm done. Okay. Um, if you want more tutorial, pa plug ko na rin yung YouTube ko. <laughs> so ayan, you can go type this link sa youtube.com si Red Trend TV for more video tutorials. Nag-upload din po kasi ako ng tutorial dyan on how to create quiz using Microsoft Forms. Tapos uh, how to create a survey. So let's go na lang din po.